oh, what are you playing? I said, 13 centimeters Angel's Rim. And she goes, 13 centimeters Angel's Rim? <laughs> All right. Yeah. It actually onboards me relatively well. <laughs> <laughs> I do have hat? lots of hats. <laughs> I've never seen you in a hat. I don't have lots of hats. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hang on. I can't read the bloody menu. Yeah. Hang on. The review is, it's so good. I couldn't help myself but queef in excitement. Mm. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Go, Nick. What do you got? Surely we've come up with some polish for this. Sing you polish. would think. Pete's party, yeah. It's Pete's party time. Pa -pa 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 party. But you'd be wrong. <laughs> <laughs>for Thursday, the 4th of March, live from the Low Key Studios. I'm Nick Boy. Tonight on the show, we've got Outriders impressions, small models, and big arguments because it is the return of the list. But I can't argue with myself, so I am joined by... Uh, Gus, who's going to steal a bit of Steph's thunder by first of all showing off my shirt, of Ooh. which you will see I'm sporting my own face, looking a little concerned. A little charty. Later on, uh, next Aww. to me... <laughs> That's a very nice shirt. It's Steph, who's just happy to be here and isn't going to talk about her shirt at all. Oh, well, now I just feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> and Peter. And Peter. And I got a haircut. That's nice. Look at my haircut, everyone. That's, That's good. the only thing that happened to me this week. Look at that fresh face. Please enjoy it. That's nice. Because I'm seeing in the chat lots of comments about all three of our shirts. Oh. Uh, and people liking mine, people liking yours, people liking Steph's. Nice. And Pete, this is a classic Peter T-shirt. This is there's nothing wrong with a with a classic. This is a basic T or a basic Pete. Fair. <laughs> Uh, did you see uh, Miles Ross, who I believe is watching right now, did hey. you see his funny TikTok uh, I started in the following week? him on TikTok, but I've seen them on Twitter and I've just been like hit with an influx of his like very interesting setups of thumbnails that I then scroll past. I'm like, I'll watch that later. I'll watch that later. <laughs> and it's him about to do something interesting and I'm like... I saw so you're saying you haven't watched anything? <laughs> I saw the one of him with Sorry. the impression from his headset. Yes, very good. Oh yes, I, I saw that expect one. that it went viral because I was like, that, like that's nailing a thing. Yep. And just when you look ahead, that's the that's the hair right oh there. Oh my god, <laughs> it totally is. And Miles has such a I can't look like, at it. Has such a majestic mane, but he Peter's does. comes in close second. And Miles is watching right now, and he says, "Well, wow, fuck you, Gus." <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. That's my favorite that is, is his promotion of the uh, of the CDL, where he was spitting water everywhere. Mm. Uh, I'm sure that saved somewhere. So my favorite is that the I, I'm pretty sure he uploaded some bloopers where he got so far yeah. through the thing and was like, oh, "Damn it!" and like, "Oh, got to the point of, of water. the performance and was like, out of water." <laughs> <laughs> uh, of course, it's not just uh, the four of us here. We've also got one more person on the ones and twos. Hey! Hey! It's Will. In a hat. In a hat. hat. He has the power of the editing and like contextual jokes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. For a second, I was so sure you hadn't brought a hat that you've quickly edited or used some kind of post-production wizardry. Like, He's done something graphics here. Mm -hmm. Is that what you did? Is it graphics? It's not graphics. I can tell you that. <laughs> oh <my God>. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> he didn't tell us. He <laughs> no, didn't know anything the about it. Commitment <laughs> to the bit. bit. Now that wait, 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 wait. is a bit. Now that is a bit. Hey! Hey! <laughs> Don't Lovely. You, you've got like maybe 12 more cuts. I was going to say, you've also we'll like. Back to you. We'll come yeah. back to you. I can see your pile. You've dug yourself into a hole of like, this is a thing we expect every week now. So, uh, a massive thank you to Contrasted in the chat right now, who's gifting tier one subs like it's nobody's business. It is someone's business, though. It's Contrasted's business. Thank you very much uh, for all those gifted subs. What uh, uh, I have. I, like, uh, I mean, it uh, happened with oh. you, it happened with you, it happened with Stephen. I don't want to talk about it again. It was, I put it on a t-shirt <laughs> once, we're done with it. It is the emergence of a completely bizarre and authentic personality once you emerge from the spawn point orifice uh, on the other side. Yeah, and yeah, you're, you're like, saying oh. that Will has a little tickle of it now. <laughs> yeah, totally. That he's left and now he's here and he can be his wild and zany self. Who? <laughs> <laughs> Which, oh, that's a Smash Bros beanie as well. <laughs> okay. 
I was like, that's not very you, but then it became. I have you. never seen him in a beanie before yeah. in my entire life. I've known this guy for like six years now. I've never yeah. seen that. Can I tell you the truth? I've never seen me in a beanie until right now. <laughs> and your thoughts? It's not good. No. Not no. Good. <laughs> Although I love that you're like, he's, he's really branching out from the things they made you do on that show. One of them was which is like, uh, funny hats. <laughs> Wear funny <laughs> hats. That's it. <laughs> they made it so funny clothes are funny, we'll right? We'll do full oh, costumes, full right? Circle. Just hats for this review, okay? Uh, hold this, hold this coffee mug and just have fun with it. Um, the uh, I saw as well, you know. Uh, in the chat, it was all syntax errors. I think I said, uh, "OMG, Will is Jesse from Breaking Bad." <laughs> He was disgusting. He wasn't oh. ready. He wasn't, he wasn't ready. ready. He wasn't ready. Always Welcome, ready. everybody, uh, to Back Pocket for another week. Very excited to have you here. Very excited to have you with us. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for being with us for another week. We're very excited to have you here, so thank you for joining us. Um, anyone have anything interesting to say before we jump in the show? What's been going on? I've got a <clears throat> beer to crack, which is sometimes fun for people to listen to. Oh, yeah. Well, ASMR. Well, right. we were... <laughs> Oh, oh, that was a good one, though. Oh, that was a good one. That was a Love. good crack, that though. Sound. That was a good crack. Classic. Put that on a soundboard. Put James Squires, contact us. We'll crack as many beers as you want. I do imagine. Responsibly. The first thing that'll happen is someone will make a gif of that, which, <laughs> like, does not have any sound whatsoever. Just the looping thing of Pete doing that with, and like, Pete satisfying. Oh, God, not that again. <laughs> Just, like, satisfying sound. <laughs> that being said, you have to drink responsibly, but no one says anything about cracking beers responsibly. We're just gonna you could crack 100 beers, but you're only allowed to drink two in the first hour and one every con- consecutive hour. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, if any, because you have to drink them because it would be ethically irresponsible to waste them. Environmentally damaging. <laughs> that, so. uh, okay, so it was just beer opening was the only thing? thing? I am levelling a warlock in Destiny because I have done 15 looted clears of the Deepstone Crypt and I still haven't got Eyes of Tomorrow, which means I still don't have my Triumph title. I mean this really platonically. I'm really turned on right now. <laughs> uh, that's very exciting. You took a little step away from Destiny for like a week or two, did you? Yeah, I just feel like I'd kind of done everything and, it, you know, it was. I was like, oh, this is it for me until the next expansion. Mm. But I just, the one thing that I'm missing is this, like, dumb title that I want to get, which is basically just a, you know, when you see characters running around, they've got a purple word underneath that says, like, you know, Oath, oath breaker or something yeah. <laughs> like that. <laughs> you could get one from completing a whole bunch of challenges in the Deepstone Crypt uh, called Descendant. Mm. But one of the things you have to have done is get the raid exotic, which is an RNG thing, and right, so you, you only get keep... you only get one chance at it a week. Good God! So even though I've done the raid like 30, 40 times or whatever, I've only had fifteen like looted clears of it. Yeah. But everyone's like, you got to create more characters because you then you get a, one chance chances. per character. And I was like, I already play enough of this game. I don't need to like play yeah. another character like just to get this stupid gun. I look forward to hearing you report next week about all the characters you have since I crea- created. I created a wall. Give it another six <laughs> weeks, I reckon. You got another 12, 12 yep. looted clears to but go. But also it's kind of like, it's kind of renewed my my love for the game because playing the Warlock is really different. I didn't realize that but all the, the, best sub- class. the subclasses play so differently. And It is the best class. Yeah. I, I, was, I, I, was, I was like, you know, it is the best class. I can fly. Yep. yep. It's really you fun. Fly. You can fly. Uh, Pete Guns had something to say. Oh, yeah. Pete Guns just, I think, was at least 10 gifted subs in the chat. What? Peter what? Guns. Thank you Bloody very hero. much. Uh, I mean, there's definitely, yeah, there's just there's just subs left, right, and center. Peter Guns, 10 tier one subs to everybody. Thank you very much, Peter. Oh, my hero. goodness. And I'm seeing some familiar names getting those subs. So enjoy that. Um, open to beer? Open to Warlock? Open your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> we can move on. I mean, for once, I'm that face. Yeah. <laughs> for Did once, you just shit yourself. <laughs> um, no, I've got a lot going on and none of it interesting at the moment, so it's not really things to report on. The other one is gaming related, but it's not what I was going to talk about in our following segment. I'm still returning to play. Uh, I'm still. Playing the Hunter Call of the Wild. I'm still going into... Uh, I've now been playing with a group of five other friends and we all go to Africa and we all start from the same area and we all herd water buffalo and uh, 
uh, different range, di- like even lions occasionally. I feel bad about it, you, but they're you're guilty. I feel you're acting bad. like a fake lion. <laughs> I do. I really do. Yeah. Um, gazelle, uh, springbok, uh, all these things as we go around this really picturesque map. Like the rugby players or the animals? <laughs> no, the, they're based on the animal. Oh, okay, right. I don't know why I'm doing it. I don't know why, but it's like it's a thing to kill time with and just like come down at the end of the day and just like go walking through a wonderful environment. You said a group of five other friends. Do yeah. you mean other than us, or you've got another five friends involved in this game? From the first group, uh, it's the, from the first. It's group. the original. Yeah, yeah, it's okay, original. yeah, yeah. We just yeah. have a yeah, big group great. of hunters now that do this regularly. Is kind of like a way to unwind. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why I'm doing it though. I still don't, I still don't agree with it, even though I so did everyone so who... many boars in Valheim and deer, and yeah. I'm literally saying. <laughs> but you were like, gonna say like people? Where are you? Like, I need your skin. Like <laughs> <laughs> the difference between that is like a run. It's survival. Yeah, but you're doing it for trophy. But well, uh, yeah. Um, no, but you're getting money that you're. <laughs> Are you upgrading cooking gear. and eating that lion? No, but you're using the money from it to upgrade <laughs> weapons and gear. So there's a game. Like, but are you, you cooking? Are lions. you cooking and eating the vex? The, no. no, but they're trying to kill me. Like in a, they're trying to take over my That's planet war. and stuff. That's war. I wish I could say there's a moment where very different to chasing a, a running mat, which is literally a boar. That's like ah, there goes leather. Yeah. Where <laughs> yeah. I look over the top of a horizon with a four to tape it to eighteen times Hyperion scope on my whatever rifle, and I see a deer look up and War go. Now? And I'm like. <laughs> I get I aim yeah. for its heart, so it goes down in one yeah. go. And I'm like, I wish I could say I lowered the rifle and said. You live today. I didn't. I shot it. So, yeah, there's something very strange about that. But I reckon if I put you in front of it after like a couple of hours, you'd be like, this is strangely addictive. It happens. I, I mean, I, better you get it out here than, yeah, let's go you know, that. like South Africa. Yeah, let's go with that. <laughs> uh, well, we sneakily got into it, so we may as well properly get into it. Uh, we've been talking about our gaming week, so I'm just saying. What y'all? Been playing, of course, is when we talk about our gaming week. This is brought to you by Brent Jones, aka Loki Cat. Loki Cat, what is there to say about Loki Cat that hasn't already been said? He is, and I ask that genuinely. I need some help, Loki Cat. I would say that he's a fine, upstanding gentleman. Oh, okay. So has a, has a secret him. passion for home and away. Yep. And uh, just generally loves birds and cats equally. And do you do you think? How do you think? How do we? How do we get Alf on the show just so we can show him that picture? Fiverr or something? Surely he does one of those. Not Fiverr, but isn't that oh, like... No, cameo, cameo. 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 <laughs> sure. <laughs> Fiverr's a real oh step God, down. I'm going to check right now. It seems too just young. To get his and, reaction. It seems too young and hip for Alf. No, that's where they all go, isn't it? Yeah. Cameo, cameo is the cameo is the thing. Totally. I reckon right. something like What's that. What's his is, name? Uh, it's not yeah, Alf. I was just, just, just going to go. I was going to search Alf Stewart. Loki Cat's in the chat. Uh, his name is, Loki Cat would know this, uh, Ray Meager. That sounds right. Yeah. I saw him at the Logies. He looked very angry and drunk. And I was like, that's exactly what I thought he'd be in real life. It was great. <laughs> well, Andrew, I mean, HO12, five tier one subs. Hey. Like, genuinely, Flaming. don't you reckon that it's if you play a character for that long, it's oh, yeah, difficult yeah. to... To separate yourself from... Or I think you just play yourself and you that makes work it. easier. Yeah, that's true. That's what I do. He's not on Cameo, but he can be booked He can be booked through VIP Entertainment as a corporate entertainer. That's All right, let's do that. We're a corporation. Although, I will say, Kyle Meager is on Cameo. Is that? His son? I don't know. Okay. But it will only cost us $10 to get something from him. Let's so get that guy. Let's get something from let's him. Let's get that guy to say, stone the flame and galah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah but I mean, he also calls people galah. You're, so. you're blending two. We get, it's the cheap. One. We yeah. get, We've only got to get for like one. In September words. 2009, Ray was the third highest paid personality on Australian television behind Eddie Maguire and Rove McManus. He doesn't need cameo. The third highest paid is that a collective thing? Like they've gone, look at, he's been on TV for so long. Yeah. Like if we added up his total earnings or is that like No, I think episode? that's just like like what he earns. If he's getting wow. his 3% pay rise every year. Yeah. Jeez. That is Over incredible. 40 years of being. Wow. I mean, that show needs him. So obviously he's like carved out a role that they're like, we can't do home and home without you. No. And that show, yeah. That's unbelievable. I'm going to contact this Carl guy. We'll get some. We'll get something going. <laughs> this is exciting. Um, uh, okay, Carl Mega is a Canadian actor. Says IMDb. Well, there you go. There you go. He'll do it. He'll we'll get him to do his ass. best Australian accent with one yeah. of the most cliched Australian oh. things. We could just find a lookalike. Oh, that's good too. 
That's good too. Okay, we'll figure something out later. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, let's talk about the games that we've been playing. Gus, why don't you start us off? Sure. Um, so yeah, aside from Killing Time and Killing Deer, I have been playing a game I promised I would uh, check out, uh, and I have since sunk about seven to eight hours into Persona 5. Uh, this makes you very excited, Nick, and so <laughs> that... Uh, I, I'm. I'm confused as to what you're excited about. Seven to eight hours was what I was excited about. Okay, okay, good, good, good. Um, this is I'm playing it because it's in. Is it the PS collection? PS Plus PS collection. PS Plus collection. Yeah. yeah, right. So playing it because I got it for free with my PS Plus subscription. So I don't think I was ever going to pay for it. Um, but uh, yeah, it's one of those games that I've just heard resounding uh, sort of positive things from so many different types of gamers in my life mm -hmm. uh, that play. Yeah, you like your weird games. You like this. I wouldn't expect nothing less. But I know a lot of other people who would never pick this up who are well, like normal gamers. No, no, no. Just like <laughs> yeah, 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 only yeah, play yeah, yeah. Cold or something. And they're like, I put 90 hours into this. And I was like, okay, sure. I'll give it a go. Um, I am... Can, I'm still intrigued, so that's what I'm. I'm ah, happy about yeah, that's that. That's, that's the thing that not what I was expecting. Oh, okay, what I mean is that like it is batshit crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not going to bother trying to explain it because it's been around for a long time, so most people should know. And if you don't, I employ you to like look into it yourself. I'll have it explained the way the game explains it to you because it's very strange. Um, but I have realised in the process of those first few hours how much I've missed playing an RPG. I haven't really sunk time into one uh, for a long time. And so I'm in really enjoying just the slow moments of mm -hmm. saying, hey, you got to go to bed every night and you got to write in your diary. You've got to slowly remember that you're, you've got a routine to this. It's not just like a linear story. Um, and that is appealing. Like the art style and everything, I like bombastically over-designed, confident style treatments. This is too many at once yeah right. it is just like even for me who i'm like you know go 110 percent really slap that paint on the canvas it's like whoa 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 slow down just the 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 colors the sounds the the placement of the everything the text the characters voice performances everything's intense but that's a that's a nice experience and i've like it's it's if i was prepared to go into it for that reason so i'm expecting mm. that and I'm, I'm okay with that um the i i miss turn-based combat i haven't done a lot of mm -hmm. that i'm ready to dive into final fantasy remake for that and this is a nice way to get back into that it's not turn-based combat yeah isn't it no it's l real time they changed it the, the remake is oh sorry yeah, the, the remake, remake. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. i thought you yeah. meant what i'm playing now yeah sorry um okay yeah well i'll enjoy that i'm sure but i'm enjoying slower methodical mm -hmm. turn-based combat um and then the other thing I'm really enjoying is that it is this super stylized, fanciful, over-the-top, absurdly strange narrative, but it is also juxtaposed to a very regular, or attempt to show you a very regular lifestyle of being a Japanese boy living in Tokyo, or moves to Tokyo, um, moves in in a small little apartment, or, you know, a share place above a cafe, and has to take the subway to school and do mundane things. Um, and in that sense, that's the thing I'm loving the most. Yeah. Um, because it is this really, like, it's just... It's some laundry being done. I mean, <laughs> I've traveled through Tokyo and I loved it and I love the recreation of it. Um, the, one of the first things you do is go to school by getting on the train and you get on at Shibuya Station. Yep. Um, and then while you're at Shibuya, you have to change onto the Ginza line, which I did. And I was like, it was really confusing in real life. And in the game, I actually stared at the yellow signs, which are everything is the exact same as it is in Japan. Mm. And I'm like, I'm actually going, shit, how do I get across to follow that to the J line that you go through there? And wow. I was like, it, in a game where you also travel to a castle of a pervert who has magical knights that fly in <laughs> and you use a, a mythical gun while your cat sidekick tells you that adults are terrible and you need to anti-corrupt their hearts in your dreams and you're like, yeah, but... But the train station was actually like the train station. <laughs> and it was like, that was amazing. And I've heard that there is more of that as you go into the game. That It's a nice, repri rep like, to spend time in that crazy game mm -hmm. and then to spend time in this far more subdued uh, social simulator where I think you make relationships with other kids at school, that kind of stuff. Um, and I'm excited by that, and I'm sure I will get bored of that, so then it's nice to dive into some absolutely batshit crazy Kind of game. Um, yeah, I'm going to keep going. Uh, I, I'm worried it's going to hit a point where I just start to be fatigued or it feels like busy work. Uh, you couldn't get fatigued by a 100-hour video game. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, at this point, it has not left me to my own devices at like eight hours. It is still pushing me through what feels like Ha like it's pushing me through the the story. Mm. I'm not having any downtime to do anything. So I wonder if you Except get to laundry. 
<laughs> well, no, I haven't even done that yet. Or is that narrative-based like, laundry? It might be, but it's like at this point, I'm literally going from cutscene to like dialogue back into new cutscene. Yeah, it's right. not; so, it hasn't opened up yet. It's so funny those games. I remember in Yakuza, there was a whole thing where you had to keep going back to the gym, and you had a personal trainer who would be like, "Hey, you haven't been eating very well." There was karaoke <laughs> and Sleeping Dogs, uh, which is in uh, yeah. Kong, and like, yeah, some funny little side. You don't, <clears throat> you don't necessarily get like, whoa, open. <gasps> hey, oh, Mitch is rating. It's hey, it's Ray. Mitch Brazil. <laughs> Drum solo. Yeah. Uh, that was a, not a solo. That was not a solo. <laughs> no, you're right. That was, a roll. that was a drum roll. Collective solos. It was a slap roll. But, like... Pretty good. Pretty fucking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> like, we basically had the raid message. <laughs> That's not how that's supposed to work. Uh, welcome, everybody, who is watching Mitch. Uh, I'm sorry, because it's only downhill from here. Because he is by far the most entertaining person on the platform. Our cameras don't move. We can't play in musical instruments. And we don't have any bananas for scale. I, and I see exactly. names like Wave Drummer and uh, Eat My Pixie Dust that are very, like... Musically oriented. Musically oriented. Yeah. <laughs> there ain't no music here. We are not here. <laughs> Uh, and also, Mitch, if you're watching, we haven't forgotten. <laughs> yeah, totally. And we spoke about it yesterday. Yep. <laughs> it's coming. <laughs> uh, that might be on me. <laughs> um, yeah, so the game uh, at the moment we're talking about, uh, what we've been playing this week, uh, we're a variety gaming show. You'll pick it up as you go along. Um, I've uh, been playing Persona 5. Hence. Not very complicated. And the game <laughs> the game doesn't really open up in a, in the way that you might be expecting or like where it is like, oh, you can just roam Tokyo. It, it, but where it does open up is the thing that you're enjoying, which is the social connections and that sort yeah. of thing. It opens up to go, okay, you now know all these people. How are you going to spend your afternoon? And you get allotted amounts of time to spend so you go okay i'm gonna go have dinner with this person or i'm gonna do homework or i'm gonna go do yeah. this thing and that's where you make your choices and where to strengthen relationships and, and do that sort of thing so i didn't yeah. love that in um the most recent fire emblem i think that was the reason i kind of fell away yep. from that because that was a similar kind of chore maintain social mm. relationships uh in the school um but i do like that this one feels far more uh segmented and like you kind of like well what do you do now you do that and then you're on, you watch a cut scene you move on to the next thing it's not you run around and open yeah, it. and that that uh, I totally know what you and it was that thing of like oh I'm gonna run here and have a conversation and then I'm gonna run over here and do that. This is much more like oh I'm gonna choose to do homework and then you kind of just fade into that. Yeah. And do this. Yeah. Um. But the joy of the game is developing those relationships because that's where you really get to explore. Yeah. An incredibly big cast of wonderful characters. I already like all the characters that I'm in, involved with up until this point. I will say the one thing that I find really jarring, which is just, I think, a sort of uh, leftover, I think it's how Atlas kind of make their games, is that there's a real mix between this is a cutscene. Some of them are full hand-drawn, cut, like animated, like an anime cutscene that's voice and everything. It's like you're watching a show. It's like, mm. this is beautiful. It's amazing. Mm. Then you'll go to a cutscene where all the characters are just standing there and then they'll, they'll do that one where they go, huh? And they'll yeah. make a noise and the tech yeah, right. says, I gotta go to school. But then <laughs> the <laughs> next one will be like, they're all actually animated and they've got the same dialogue box, but they're like, hey, I need to go to school. And you're like, well, that one's voice, that one wasn't. And then it fades to black again, it comes That's back really up. That's really common in a lot of uh, totally, in totally. Japanese games. You kind of have to like pepper the money throughout the <laughs> but there's a dip like, it's almost like how uh, big TV shows are written where there's like there's eight writers and everyone's assigned an episode yeah. it's yeah. like oh the intern got assigned <laughs> but they just peppered in between yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but all of those literally are butted up back to back with dips to black in between yeah, each yeah. one and then sometimes it involves running to the end of that screen and then they'll dip to black and then it'll just mm. launch into another one I'm like why'd you even give me control I think generally it's for things that are not uh, primary plot driven sure. and that's the stuff that is not because it's like you may choose to engage with it or not so yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm so happy that you have not fallen off it because I was expecting yep. you to fall off it after like two hours the, the other reason I am sticking with it is because I'm playing it uh, remotely so I'm doing similar to what Perfect. you do with your, um, your, your what's it called? Backbone your backbone I'm just using a uh, play uh, Jewel Shock 4 and I'm using a little mount and I'm playing it in bed oh, uh, cool. and it's like a really yeah, good nice. game for that because it's not that sort of instant perfect game for that yeah so it's just dialogue and story and that kind of stuff so yeah it's a nice little uh, one to keep me playing and I will can I will persist for now god damn I'm so proud of you I'm also proud of Andrew H O twelve uh, who gifted five subs that's Amazing. who Andrew who, who? Total of 10. who I think 12? Andrew H O twelve did 
a batch of five earlier. It says at the really? top, ten. It does See, ten. next to the little present. Yeah. Yeah. Ten. Just doing them in groups of five. Yeah, Just like yeah, rationing yeah, yeah. it out, Kept picking it out. people as he goes. <laughs> uh, Thank you. All right, uh, Persona 5 for Gus, Peter Burns. Yeah. What have you been playing? I've been playing a little bit this week. Tell me. And it feels like I've been, uh, like the thing that I'm going to talk about in the middle, because I've got three things. One thing you don't have footage for, and it's going to be very quick. It feels like it was four years ago I played that. I don't know what this week was, but it felt very long for yep. some reason. <laughs> I started playing Pokemon Sword oh my God. and Shield, but Sword uh, last night or yesterday, uh, and it's incredible. Oh, no. uh, I'm only a couple of hours in, but it's, I fucking love it. Uh, I will talk it? about it. No, never played it. Uh, the last one that I played was Sun and Moon, um, and uh, that was when we were at still making Spawny and um, I can't remember. I, I, I jumped in and out of the series after like uh, Ruby. So I didn't play all of them, but I've played most of them. And this is incredible. Uh, I'll talk about it more next week once I've played a bit more because I feel like it's going to be like... All consuming? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, this episode is taking me back. <laughs> <laughs> Paradise Killer for you, wasn't it? <laughs> uh, the game that I played through earlier in the week and I finished uh, was Buddy Simulator 1984. And this is a game that's been uh, uh, at the front of Steam. I don't know if it was just like recommended to me because I've played games like it. Um, but it's lots of really like very positive reviews. And I was like, I want to check this thing out. It looks like small but indie and cool. And... Um, <clears throat> It so totally finished. is for <laughs> yeah. the uh, yeah it's uh, for the first uh, I would say it is, it has an incredible sh- first hour mm-hmm. uh, and then it turns to garbage. Will uh, fast forward to the garbage. Fast forward. <laughs> I think this is the first. I've only put like the first little. Oh, actually, don't skip that far forward because Sorry. <laughs> uh, it, it starts off as this DOS game, um, like this DOS emulated kind of game, and it's like you know boot the ROM and that kind of thing. You're like typing commands mm. in, and you meet the AI that is in control of this game that you've booted up, um, and you give it a name, and I called mine Pockety, and um, <laughs> and then you play, like, Hangman with it, like, you type in, like, you know, it's very, very simple stuff, and it's like, the AI's like, we're friends now, I want to, I want you to stick around, and these games I don't feel like are strong enough for you to stick around with me for mm. a long time, so I'm going to make this game better for both of us, and then we can be together forever. And so there's this like sinister overtone of like this is a horror AI thing, and single, like, single it kicks you out and you come back in. And so it's gone from this DOS game to a uh, text adventure, uh, and then it evolves from a text adventure further and further and further the yeah. more you play, which is a really like clever idea. Um, but it is so drawn out, and the writing is not good enough to hold it. Yeah, right. Through the middle of the game. Uh, because yeah, the the idea is really strong at the at the start, and it's really fun getting through all this, uh, and then it becomes a text thing, and then the text thing becomes a graphic based thing, mm. and you see how you interacted with the text world is reflected in the okay, first right. iteration of graphics, which are like you know early Pokemon yeah. kind of games, like yeah, right. very simple two D like top down things, and uh, uh, it just loses itself in being like. I, I explained it to you the other day. I was like, it feels like that subreddit, I'm 14 and this is deep. Yeah. Like all the writing is like so sincere and like earnest and, but just, just cheap and easy. Mm. Mm. Uh, and it just, it doesn't land. And then the, the game is not fun to play because it's emulating not fun games. Yeah. And is saying to you, this game isn't fun. You're not having fun, are you? And I'm like, no, I'm not. Speed it up. And it doesn't. Is that this part or the bit we saw earlier? With no, the, it's a, like, if you, if you now skip, kind of... skip to like three quarters of the way through the clip, uh, we'll, we'll see kind of like some graphic stuff like this. Um, but this is purposely being made to be possibly not as fun and therefore it's no, trying to make... No, like the AI is trying to make the best thing possible to keep you around is the conceit. Oh, shit, but then it moves yeah. up. And then it moves up to this and then it moves up again uh, and without spoiling the end of it, don't skip any further ahead. So there's more stuff that happens. Um, I, I would say that the game is... Uh, like, I checked the time once I finished it. Yeah. I played 4.6 hours. Yeah. It felt like forever. Did you finish it? I, f- I finished it, yeah. And yeah. I, it took me three sittings to play a four and a half hour game. Yeah, where it's right. like I put eight hours into The Last of Us the first time I sat in front of it. Yeah. It's like, that's like pretty telling that... I wanted to finish it because I was interested in the idea, but the it it loses its hooks really quickly. Is part of it, beyond the writing and stuff that you were talking about is 
Do you reckon part of it is that like it starts to emulate games, and so therefore it needs to start making like good video games, whereas text-based stuff is like it's a novelty that we don't. Whereas like there's so many top-down pixel whatever that once you start doing that, it's like. Well, I could be playing, like I could go play Animal Crossing, which is doing Pokemon, all this stuff. Yeah, yeah all those. Yeah, that, that's yeah. exactly it. It's like, it. It's not that it needs to be a perfect version of that game either, because the idea is strong. It's mm. like the reason it put you, this in front of you is is a is a strong idea. It's just that it could be exactly what it is, but it can't stay around for long enough for you to see how, like, yeah. how weak it is as a design. It should be like. Pony Island or the button one that we played yeah. a few weeks ago yeah. where you burn through it in like 45 minutes. Totally. The game, it should be like, I think this game would be really comfortable at two hours and it's it's double that length. Yeah. And and like as you progress through, it just kind of hits you with the same concepts mm. again and again. Mm. It's like, oh, I'm still not, this still isn't what you want from me. And, yeah. like, and like the relationship between you and the AI start, like, you know, there's the friction and you see it turning against you and it's like, so it's like it's it's just very obvious, uh, and the execution isn't great. But for people who like things like um, what's the game you love, Undertale, 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 yeah, 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 right. For people who like that, I feel like it it isn't as clever, but you'll get licks of the same yeah, yeah. thing. Feels like it has the same vibe. Mm. Uh, yeah. So like, and it's not expensive. And again, that first hour, like, I was. I loved it. Yeah, I loved right. it. And I was like, I want this to like stick around. Uh, and unfortunately it doesn't. Uh, but anyway, uh, if you're interested in that kind of game, it's totally going to like scratch that itch. Uh, but be aware. I can't remember. Like probably mid like 20, 15, 30. maybe 15 yeah, bucks. Right. Um, maybe not even that. Uh, the other thing that I've been playing is breath edge which is a game I didn't realize. It's like a, uh, a space survival... 1450. 1450. Uh, Breath Edge is like a space survival sim. Uh, your mm. <clears throat> it's It looks great. It's a game... It's It came out in 2018. Wait, think, really? In early access. I was going to say, because oh. I've seen a, and a has lot just of... just launched. I've seen a lot of talk about this in the last week or so. And I'd never heard of it. Uh, and I, it is a testament to the early access system of Steam, because I can see how... This game would have played three years ago, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. and it wouldn't have been great. Yep. And three years of working with a community, because it's a small team working with a community to make a great game, has worked. Yeah, this is really effective. It's really funny. Uh, it's a beautiful thing to be funny. in. It's yeah. very, very funny. I was going to say, because it looks very similar to a game I played called Adrift, which I think was also available in VR, but that was yes. more of a kind of thrillery mystery and thing. And realistic the, space. Yeah, kind of like, yeah. yeah. That, uh, was, that was great. I really loved the, that. The humour in this is like, the whole concept is that you were, and it's dark humour, uh, you were uh, on this vessel transporting your grandfather's body in a, in a funeral ship to wherever you were going, and it collided with another ship. Death yeah. Stranding in space. It is Death Stranding in space. <laughs> you go and you collect materials outside uh, to go back to your bench and craft better tools, and then uh, I've, I made it through chapter one in about two hours and got to chapter two, and it's like, oh, now I'm like really seeing where this game is going to become like quite expansive. Yeah. Um, so getting through that first chapter was a good two-hour kind of tutorial, mm. and I can see how refined it was through the early access process and now I'm like I'm gonna I'm, I'm definitely gonna finish it and it's fun to kind of jump into and every time you play it you like you find the right mat to build the right thing to make yourself more powerful because you become better at the game by exploring the little corners of this like wreckage and finding the component that you need to make the better gear to progress further. Mm. Getting some serious um, Subnautica vibes in terms of like interesting environment to attach the survival crafting foraging thing. You're in a foreign, <coughs> sorry, uh, in a sort of hazardous environment, I guess, with like the ability to push out further and further each time. Yeah. Um, is it, it's a designed world, I take it. It's yeah, not, yeah, it's, it's not procedural. No, no procedural, no. there's no random at all. Like, I yeah. think there's some, like, I think the materials are yep. reasonably procedural. There's, like, key items that yep. are located in different areas. It's like, I needed to find a light bulb, and if I found the light bulb uh, in a lamp where you would expect to find a lamp next to a bed where a man was 
chained to like handcuffed to the bed and like wearing like he was on a love heart shaped bed and there was a purple globe in the bowl in he's the, so floating he's, in the middle of yeah space, yeah right? so he, yeah, on okay. one, he was in one of the bedrooms that got disconnected and now we're talking about some fucking breath edging <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah i was gonna say it's how i want to go <laughs> <laughs> tied to a bed in space i mean yeah it's like i think i think uh it could be it doesn't really have a a narrative um but I can't really see anyone not enjoying time with it. Yeah. I would like this, right? You would love it, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'm really keen to play this because, again, sorry not to harp on, but I really love Subnautica, but I hate that I put it down at a certain point mm. and I kind of feel like this would be scratch that itch. Um, something about a, a sidekick I've read about. I don't want to spoil it if you're not up to it yet. Is there any form of like communication on people you're talking There's to? There's communication or? the whole time with uh, a another AI. <laughs> okay. I spent all week talking to AI, uh, <laughs> and there's like, yeah, there's some, yeah, there's some character, right, okay. in the space. I don't want to spoil too much, but yes, there's like, there's messages coming in from one thing that is very ob obscure, and ob like, you get like text messages from someone constantly. Mm. Yeah, right. And it's weird. Mm -hmm. uh, but then there's like the tutorial AI, which like is humorously written yeah, as yeah, well okay. as being like. You're gonna need to get more radiation. I just I, I read something about a possible uh, yeah character that is maybe met, and I was like that. Everyone mentioned it in everything I read, so I'm not gonna spoil it here. But I'm intrigued to play it but to see if that's a thing. It was Grogu. You do spoil it here. Now I've seen it. <laughs> Let's move on. Uh, okay, cool. I'm d I I had not seen anything about this except for the thumbnail on Steam. But I'm now gonna play it. Just this Steam. So my by the looks of it yeah. at this stage. Or? I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Cool. Cool. Okay, buddy simulator, Pokemon, Breath Edge. Yeah. You. <laughs> Who are you? No. Uh, Stephanie. <laughs> Who are you? Um, I'm a person who played the Outriders demo. Thank God someone mm. did. Yeah. No, <laughs> um, it's a Square Enix kind of grounded third person cover shooter. The premise is that we have just all but destroyed Earth, and so we've put the population into like arcs to go find life on another planet, and uh, we are the outriders who go ahead of the population to kind of set up on this new planet that yeah, we right. found before they land to make sure that it's all, you know, good to go. And when we initially land, it's like very idyllic, it's beautiful, waterfalls, very green, seems amazing, and then it kind of all turns to shit very quickly as we realise there's stuff on this planet that is like not ideal mm -hmm. for humans. And um, as a result, you kind of end up like with some mutations and cool powers. Yep. Um, so you, as a game, it's like, it's very, reminds me of like Gears of War or The Division or something like that, where it's very much like. I'm seeing Mass Effect here as well. I don't know if it's like the palette, but it like. <clears throat> the Ma Mass Effect, yeah. And the fact that you can kind of use like, um, I, I guess you'd call it space magic, but it's really just kind of like magic that's that's been given powers that have been given to you. It's just magic you use in space. Um, yeah, <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, so it feels like I find that since the only other shooter that I regularly play is Destiny, which is such a game that is based around freedom of movement um, as a shooter, I find it very difficult going into a game that is really heavy and stuck to the ground. You, there's no jump button. It's all like mm -hmm. cover and mantle, that kind of thing, you know? Um, all of the, and also like I find with cover shooters, you know, when they're, they're not like triple A cover, cover shooters, it's very like you're moving through sections like this that are just like, you know, boxes and mm. um, walls and it feels very much like cover shooter set pieces, um, which is a bit unimaginative, I guess. Um, Gus? I don't want to do... Like, hard pass. Like, <laughs> what, is, what the hell is... This is just Demo. like... Did we go back in time? Like, that, that, that's, yeah, this what is, this is what I think is interesting because, like, I think that there is a place for games like this like that are not triple a and that are like a b grade oh, yeah, game yeah yeah if they are priced accordingly yeah and it is like reasonably fun once you start getting your different powers to kind of you know be in this environment and the story is kind of interesting as to like how the world is now that half the population have been like given these crazy pyromancer gifts and other things that they've got and the world is kind of falling apart and you know everything but like yeah i i just it, it's about 90 bucks, I think, on Steam, which is just not a price point that I would so you, this, attach so to this kind of game. The demo is $90, and then you unlock the full game. 
No, the demo is free. Okay, okay, okay. But the progress carries over if you purchase the full game. Yeah. So, like, I would not pay $90 for this. The other thing that's weird is that there's some weird artistic choices that are made. <laughs> like, um, some of the cutscenes are kind of directed in a cool way, but they've gone for that kind of shaky I've seen hand. this super shaky jar oh, Which God, makes sense really? when you're doing a follow shot, right? Like, sure. if you're following There's action and yeah. dictates the shot. Yeah, yeah, but when they're just static characters standing there and the camera's going like this, Someone it's like, is, there an, the is there an earthquake yeah. right now? Oh like, God. why is that happening? That's one of my, like, pet peeves in games is, like, seeing a camera do something that a camera operator couldn't do. Like, in a directed cutscene that's trying to feel like a drama mm. where there's a camera in the space yeah. and seeing the camera do something that's not possible, I'm like... That's fucking sick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's super, it's super weird. The other thing too is that like there's people in the chat talking about the motion sickness. Like it's got that motion blur thing on it, which a lot of games have and mm. you can just usually turn it off, but you can't turn it off in this. Yeah, right. I love motion blur. So it's like... <laughs> motion blur is great. No. <laughs> uh, you can't turn it off. And so it's like, it, it has that thing a bit like we were talking about in Call of the Sea where like when the camera oh, moves yeah, in a certain yeah, yeah. way, you, you feel a bit like Ugh, in your stomach. Does, is that like, not to get into sort of details, but like motion blur being blurring everything. And then there's also like kind of motion, there's like camera sway that I've seen some games have. They're like, you can have a certain amount of head bob and it's stuff like, like that. always breathing. That's what makes me vomit. Yeah, it's like the yeah. ones that it just never really, or, or just a badly programmed camera that just yeah. like doesn't really want to behave. there's other just really clunky stuff stuff as well if it, it was like if it was early access maybe it would be one thing but it's not it's a demo ahead of a full release well it was yeah. supposed to be out now and it's coming out at the end of the month yeah yeah um things like that just feel very last gen like you would say or last i'd say last, yeah. last gen like when you go like to talk to an npc in a shop it like plays out a one and a half second animation and then kind of cuts to another scene like really mm. awkwardly mm. and so characters are kind of popping up. Or if you walk out of a door, it'll, pay, it'll play like a 1.5 second animation of the door opening and then throw you into a loading screen for ages. And it's like either use a cutscene to cover the loading or don't put the cutscene there because otherwise it's just too choppy. And it's like, why did I need to see that? There's some the stuff. Opening? I did see some stuff because people <laughs> were talking about that this week and there was an example of like a, jumping over a, like a little crevice. Yeah. And you run up to and hit jump and it plays a little cutscene of your character jumping yeah, over. Yeah. And what it's actually doing is because it's a co-op shooter, it's using that moment to bring the party together. Right. So that otherwise you would start be sharding off onto right. different servers. Yeah, and so yeah, yeah. part of that is like right. inelegant solutions to making sure that everyone is together. Totally. Um, but but the door thing sounds hilarious. Is this a it shaky just, cut scene? It, it, <laughs> Sorry, it, I wasn't quite sure if what feel, we were watching. It just feels really... Um, yeah. Yeah. Oh, just hold it steady, mate. Oh. <laughs> I, it just oh. feels really, um, really clunky and just like not a polished release mm. for what we to, to a standard that we'd expect today. It feels weird for Square Enix, and it feels like weird that it's know, ninety dollars. We did get Avengers. Avengers. Yeah, um, I was going to say the, the it, so I downloaded this and I uh, booted it up and I made a character and I got through that whole thing and I booted up into the game and my character took like six steps and I went no nah. and, <laughs> and I deleted it straight away um, <laughs> so that I wasn't tempted to waste my time with it and then and then I felt bad and I went and looked at some stuff it's it, I was like you I was just like I don't know. Um, it's like the straw that broke the camel's back where I was like, which I think I said my my gaming resolution for this year was yeah, like, was not st be fine with not playing everything and stop wasting my time on games that like I'm just not having fun with. And I looked at this as just being like, oh, I know everything that's going to happen here. As soon as you like, you walk up to a like a shop that isn't open yet that you need to open so that you can go there and start crafting new kinds yeah. of ammo and stuff. And I was just like, Oh, this game will just suck like twenty hours of my life, and I won't. And I'll come out the other side of it going like, "What was that for?" Yeah. Um, and and then everything I've seen of it and I've heard it, it's been very mixed. Some people have gone, "It's fun," and then other people have gone, "It's terrible." But the one weird thing from like a design perspective, it's a cover-based shooter, but you regain health from uh, killing enemies. So this so is, I was going to. It, it's like right. encourages aggression, okay. but in a cover-based shooter, and cover-based shooters encourage like tactics they're intrinsically and, yeah. about yeah the hiding and that seems it. like yeah and to me that was like every uh, and i saw that and i saw that in action and i was like oh that's everything that is emblematic to me of why i don't want to do this because it's like this doesn't feel thought out about a game it, and, and th that respects my time yeah from it, what i can it tell. took me ages to figure that out because i was just like every time i was going behind cover and i was like far out i just need to like regen some health and then i would kind of just be like 
whatever and just kamikaze it in there. And mm. then all of a sudden my health was coming back and I was like, what just happened? Mm, it, was, it was super weird. But I didn't hate that necessarily. And some of the like, ma- like the... You talk shit about Bobo? <laughs> no, I'm saying that that's how you get health. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I, was, okay. yeah. I feel like uh, as a mechanic, I didn't mind that. And I think some of the abilities you get are really cool. And I didn't even mind that it wasn't like super polished because I was, because I quite enjoy the fact that it's a cover based shooter and an interesting like other planet thing. And uh, the story was very like B grade drama. Like people who were just like, I don't have time for you, and the world is messed up now. So whatever feelings we had, are gone. <laughs> you know, which that is also funny because it's people can fly. <laughs> yeah. Who made Bullet Storm? Yeah. Which is like, wait, what? Yeah. So people no, can no, fly. No. Made this? <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. <laughs> you, yeah. Uh, is this genuine or? Yeah, this is genuine. This looks like nothing like not Bullet look Storm, up to No, I know. And yeah. and while I do think that Bullet Storm was a game that I loved when I played it, I'm sure if we all went back and played Bullet Storm, we'd be like. <laughs> No, no, it's great. It's still great. It holds the kick up. is fucking amazing, and at least it like oh, the, it, le- the like the foul mouths on those characters. At least was like you have gone for a thing. But that was everything I saw of this was like, oh, you've just like you insert swear words just because it's like yeah, uh, it was just it was just super hokey. Like, but then it feels like a hokey action movie that you would go and see with like Vin Diesel in it or something. Ugh, that's <laughs> the worst. Sure, but at least like uh, with something like Bulletstorm, there was some really ambitious mechanics and and gameplay twists that made it like you had the whip mechanic, you had the yeah. kick, you were chaining combos. What I was going to ask here, which you've kind of part and parcel uh, answered in terms of mm. uh, there's that mechanic of like at least something here because when we were watching that clip before I was like mm. is there anything here that's different mm. uh, and that idea of regening is a way to push you forward and then Nick you mentioned it's a co-op is it like being pushed as a co-op shooter yeah yeah. right so is it like up to four kind of squad what are we talking division I, I think it's just two okay yeah, yeah I, d- I think it's just the two of you I'm just because I'm really curious as to what they are One putting three I'm oh, curious yeah. as to what they're putting on the box There's three here. different classes, so that makes sense. Yeah. Okay, right, yeah. Uh, I say s- classes, but like mutant abilities that you've been given by the singularity of space. <laughs> <laughs> it's still a pass. Um, no, it's like, what are they putting there? It's like, that is the selling point for this. It's like, you've played all these other games. This one has this mechanic married to this. And I'm like, that's not even original in itself. That's Bloodborne. Oh, there's four classes. Oh, sorry. But three player. Best yeah. player, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's funny because this was a game that I feel like a lot of people were anticipating and it got some good buzz earlier and then, yeah, and I've just seen... Ve- like, the the nicest thing I've seen people bl- say about this is like, we need games like this sometimes that are just like, I'm going to play it for the weekend and finish it and just turn my brain off. And I'm like... I don't have a fucking time. Totally, but I, but I, too, like, yeah. I, I agree with that. I think because I remember there was a there was a period of time when we just lost all of the kind of mid range yeah. priced games because it was like you had to be triple A or nothing, or it was like really cool, uh, interesting indie game. And I was like, there's still a place for that kind of mid tier stuff if it, because like it's so expensive to keep dropping huge amounts of money on like epic games all the time. And you have to pick and choose. And like, fair enough if you just only want to invest in quality, but like, I don't mind like, you know, paying like 50 bucks or something mm. for, or 60 bucks for something that's like not perfect. And this would totally have been fine if it was priced that way, but I just couldn't get past the fact that it's $90. But those middle tier games need to be ambitious. They need to be doing things that other games aren't. Um, this kind of reminds Do they? me. No, I don't, don't think so. No, well, my example. Like space Marines. And <laughs> yeah. No, but my example of that would be I think I played, was it Revenant? Um, or Revenant? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I'm with you on this one. Which is yeah. like, that was a, what this looks like. Yeah, kind of totally. Level of quality, but it was mm. doing something different. It was being ambitious. It was mixing genres. It was mm. putting Dark Souls with dungeon based generated it levels. Was taking Dark Souls. This guns. is like you yeah. had a shop, you had a buffet of like what could you put in your game, and they just went with the vanilla choice of everything. They're like it's cover based, third person, brown planet, space magic. You've got that role from Gears and a, a roadie run, um, yeah, and you've got some gruff characters. I like don't know. this looks I so. Being, I think you're being too generous to that Revenant game, whatever it was. <laughs> like, well, what I'm that saying was is that shit is this. This is like I could see no, this being yeah, really yeah, appealing. Was, no, Revenant it wasn't. Was good. It Revenant wasn't. was good. It, it was fun, and it, it was it had it had like an it had an identity. It yeah. Like I'm, I've got this is the tree based you are enemies. For. Yeah, yeah. The game starts and you have a sword and a gun. You're like, what is this game? And I was intrigued. Uh, if you're enjoying the level of discourse and arguments that are happening now, please stick around because the list segment is coming up. <laughs> <laughs> right. So this is just us warming up. I would say this looks like to me. As soon as you said co-op, I'm like, cool. Like I could totally jump sure. in with two people and play through this and have fun. And the price is wrong, but. It's more fun to me than playing a shit version of Dark Souls. Like, because that was just an ugly brown version of a Souls game. It was called Remnant. uh, Remnant. 
the reason you're okay with it being co-op is because co-op makes shit games more fun. Yeah, sure. That's so, fine. But that shouldn't be a thing they put in here just to carry what is clearly an incredible. It shouldn't be for 90 bucks, but it would be fine at 40 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like f- 40 would be a stretch, I think. Everyone go play Destiny. Everyone go yeah. play Destiny. <laughs> um, you want a real fire team? <laughs> go play Destiny. Now, if you want an indie game with... Uh, compelling new ideas. Let me talk to you about Call of Duty. Um, (laughs) Very quickly, before I get to Call of Duty, let me talk to you about Hitman 3, just because uh, I played, uh, like, as we know, I love Hitman. I love Hitman 3. I played all the way right up to the end, and then I stopped before the last level. (laughs) And then then for some reason, life got in the way, and I just never came back to it. Uh, I finished it today doing the very last level, which this is, so I'm showing now the second last level, because the last level is, like, very spoilerific. Mm Mm-hmm. Just wanted to name check the fact that I was done with it. Very satisfied with the game. I saw some division over the like that last level as being like, because it's quite... Hey, did you finish it? Yeah, but remind me. It's totally left my mind. It's like... I remember this uh, one. Oh. It's uh, the train. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was pretty rough. And it's like very different yep. than right. like a normal Hitman level. Yep. Um, I, I liked what... It wanted to do, mm. but it felt like it was. It, what should have happened is it should have. They should have paid someone else to just <laughs> code the gameplay, or like the the. Well, I, I guess I could just say the gunplay in that level because it's like yeah. the worst part of Hitman is the shooting, and then the final level is like you yeah, probably right. shoot more than you have in the entire thing of Hitman. Yeah. Um, yeah. So while I liked everything that it was doing, it was just like execution wise. Not amazing, but uh, very happy with how it ended. I like the way that they wrapped up the story as well. Uh, just overall, that that's, that trilogy is just like mm, chef's kiss triumph. Just quickly, and I'll be very quick. I vaguely remember, I think it was like Hitman 3, or we're talking original series, mm. had a, one of the games was super about being a stealthy Hitman, and the final level was you went back to the church that you used as your home base the mm-hmm. whole time, and they give you the two silver ballers and just go, okay, it's a wave mode, and there's, you get flooded with enemies, and the shooting is terrible, and I I was like, yeah. what's going on? <laughs> it just like completely pulled the rug out from under me at the end. I don't, yeah, again, not uh, assuming what happens here, but it was just a very strange way to round out your game. And I can't believe they might have done it again. <laughs> this level here was like, it's one of my favorite pieces of level design ever. I fucking love this one more than any other one in really? the game. I'm like, because when I was playing this, I was like, they are, these guys are the right team to be making a James Bond game. Yes. This level yeah, feels okay, James right. Bond. Uh-huh, uh-huh. It, it's got like, it's got so many, like, for lack of a better word, biomes. Yeah. Because that's how it kind of breaks down the map. But they they fit together seamlessly, uh, and it's like, and the the reason for being there makes sense. Mm-hmm. And I loved it. <laughs> this and it has map. one of the best kills in the entire game. Yeah. Um, but you know the one I'm talking about. <laughs> I know. So t- camera off me. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Mm. You yeah. made a sound. Yeah. <laughs> you fought someone to death. Uh, it's Jep saying Hitman Blood Money was the one I was referring to. I'm pretty sure mm. as well. So yeah, weird, weird ending. But um, didn't have a, didn't have that. But uh, but yeah, let me talk to you about Call of Duty. Uh, Call of Duty season two dropped last week. Uh, played it like after last week's show when I got home. Uh, and the big thing that came with this was Outbreak, which is um the new zombies mode. Within COD, I'd never really engaged with zombies beyond like playing a bit with Miles on screenplay, I think. Um, it wasn't really my thing, whereas this is much more like kind of almost open world war zone style map where you wander around and sort of kill a bunch of zombies and then achieve these different objectives and then choose whether to get out or go again. Uh, I've been playing a ton of it. I think that it comes with, uh, with like a a mini battle pass within it that like it runs for 13 days and if you get the if you like do all the missions within it then you get a gun um for warzone and a gun for um for multiplayer in cold war i don't know how much i'll play it after i finish that because it's feeling a bit repetitive to me now but i've spent probably like six or seven hours in it and i'm really really enjoying it and you are as well yeah i um i've probably only played like three or four hours of it and i 
fucking love this. Yes. <laughs> Pardon my French, but this is what I've always wanted the zombies mode to be in COD. Um, yeah, I played a lot of the uh, zombies in previous CODs and I sort of enjoyed how they evolved up to a point uh, and they got to a point where they just got overly convoluted with mechanics, with extra collectibles, with ways of progression through mm -hmm. the levels. They've always been... When they, were, they had a cast of like four... They were Hollywood rotating... Like AAA. John Malkovich is turning up and you're just yeah. like... <laughs> yeah, they went too far with it as with most CODs do they have to then reel it back a little bit and the the annoying thing was that <laughs> that was great that guy got flung on um is that zombies has always been purposely claustrophobic you're in areas where they're coming mm -hmm. in and you have to defend yourselves it's a wave mode that's how it works and while i don't mind that it, it then it then evolved into a game where you kind of conga line and you lead zombies on a chase as you kind of mow them down what this does is essentially go no bugger that we're going back to, we're going into an open uh world we're going into these larger maps which uh they've been using in cold war for fire team i think it's called yes yeah um yeah. Which, which is like, like sort of mini war medium zone sized style. open world maps with uh and they're great maps they're in the day which i i love so much not because zombies are scary just because nighttime leads it's just painful trying to yeah. see what you're doing totally and those zombies maps i believe in black ops 2 or something were a mess they were just neon and night and you're like i can't see anything whereas this um there's space uh and you are yeah as nick said you're running around in a squad of up to four they randomize the map with an objective and they range from things that uh, are like you need to escort or protect or do something but you've got as much time as you want before you activate that objective so you and your squad kind of just scatter because you get money every time you kill a zombie and you're looking for essence, resources and, and stuff so and you basically go and farm for 10 to 15 minutes just the world of zombies yeah and then you all agree or one dickhead just activates <laughs> it uh, to go do the objective and i think that like you said the fact that it's open much bigger open spaces feels like it can remove the sort of like threat of zombies which is you can get swarmed really easily but I think it does a really good job of funneling you into these places where you go like oh it's all big open but then I've slowly started working to it oh there's a village and now this thing is happening in a mansion and now it's like oh fuck they're everywhere and they do yeah, spawn right. around you but in a natural way the zombies burst out of the ground so you might go into a house and suddenly boom the door gets kicked in someone comes out of the like bathroom and you're like oh god you come running out and you'll see one of your friends or a teammate come out of a house and suddenly just spew <laughs> oh totally <laughs> and it, it, it's I've had great moments. So I've been playing with um, uh, Art West, uh, who is a viewer um, and uh, well, a friend, but he watches the show as well. Um, uh, and he, um, there's, there was a moment, I think, where uh, I was playing, it was either him or someone we were playing with, and it was literally like, it's all quiet. And I turn around and I just hear like, <laughs> and it's just right around the corner. And then all these zombies go, I'm like, <laughs> Yeah, it leads to great moments. I jumped in a car and drove to our teammate and jumped out just as he was getting swarmed and we turned up and mowed them down. He's like, oh, yeah. we're like, yeah, you're welcome. Uh, the only other things that are really cool is that obviously your progression carries over if you choose to move on to the next map. Can we find this game again? Sorry. I'm kidding. Sorry. I no, just, no, 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 no. I was no. playing it. When I talk Pete, enough. When Pete walked into the office, I was <laughs> yeah. playing it before. And you the thing I really love is that uh, zombies is the point is it gets so hard that eventually you will die. I think you can maybe finish them or you... Do but you, the previous ones, sorry. Right. You, okay. Is there forgiveness in terms of like with... Typically with zombies, if like one like touches you, you know. Oh, you've oh got, yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got rebounding health. You can take quite a few hits. Everyone um, has like abilities that they can like pop. Not like instant like, no, 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 no. And then no. and then you can get revived and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. So it looks yep. like Left 4 Dead. When you're getting hit, you get your. It's your so your Left 4 Dead. Yep. Lower. It's so Left 4 Dead. Uh, and there's like faster zombies. They can throw things at you. There's the fire wolves which blow up. There's like armored zombies. But the thing I was going to say is that there's a, a thing from. Uh, I heard almond. <laughs> almond but zombies it registered as almond. So vegan zombies, they yep. won't eat you, but they'll tell you that what you're eating is wrong. <laughs> uh, milk the almond zombies at the end of each round. They introduced uh, in the last couple of zombies the Pack-A-Punch and the armor upgrades, which basically is you spend the currency you earn to either upgrade your gun and up to numerous levels to make it absurdly powerful, yeah. or you you upgrade huge amounts of armor on yourself, which when we were playing original zombies kind of feels redundant because you just, you're climbing up a mountain that's getting steeper and steeper. Mm -hmm. And the better you get your guns, the harder the enemies get. So it just kind of never feels rewarding. Yeah, sure. Here, there is the ability to kind of like take stock of what's going on, restart a new map. The difficulty does go up when you choose to go through a portal onto another map. Yeah, so at the end, once you complete the objective, you either choose to go again to another map or to exfil and get out. Have you done that? Out. 
Exfil. Yeah. Dude, I've played like eight hours. Yep. And I have been able to exfil once because my team my team is always going, no, we're going to go for another. another round. I'm like, guys, level three's going to fuck us up. And <laughs> we're not all on comms together. And it is like... Yeah, it's and impossible. I think you you bank more stuff if you choose to exfil yeah, you than if you went ahead and died uh, in the next round. But the exfil right, so goes. You need to make like a judgment call. Totally, and yeah. the exfil goes. Cool, chopper's on the other side of the map. Zombies everywhere, and the music kicks in, and you all just go like, "See you at the end!" And everyone just starts <laughs> That's running. Cool. That's great. Cool. And then everywhere. and then you need to clear them out so the thing can land. If you don't clear them out on time, I don't know where it comes from but a zombie basically has a rocket launcher and shoots down your helicopter yeah. <laughs> that was the weird thing but um but yeah. yeah it's it's so much fun it's really great and I, I i hope that this is like what zombies turns into um uh i know and uh, very briefly touching on it uh the zombie integration in warzone is terrible it's horrible it's in like one corner of the map on like one boat yeah, and right. there are some amazing like gifts out there of going okay well like you get if you open up a chest on the boat and you defeat the zombies or whatever you get a special thing and so there are clips of people going well you would think that the zombies are everywhere they're not we know they're just on this one boat and so people coming in and landing and just looking up and there's just like 90 parachutes coming in and it's just like the zombies aren't what's going to kill you it's going to be Hell. everyone on the map yeah. landing in one corner <laughs> it's a really That's unambitious nice. thing considering that map is due for some kind of cataclysmic event and so this uh you said as a like a season pass is this a, a thing that's staying and it's got a season pass attached so uh, yeah it's, it's going to disappear after 30 i believe it's staying yeah. um uh i hope it's staying but it has its own little like free battle pass incorporated in it that if you do all these objectives then you get stuff and yeah. right now it is free to play i think yeah that, for those yeah. 14 days yeah. so uh, in the way that uh, warzone so, is f- so if you own cold war though you own it yes yes yeah. uh but uh in the way that warzone is free to play yeah. uh, and they have multiplayer weekends where you can jump on just for the weekend this zombies is currently downloadable um, and playable for I think it was 14 days it's probably like 11 now and at the end of that you would need to have bought Cold War oh, right. cool. play this. so we gotta get on it yeah but I, I downloaded Cold it because all, uh, that first night we were all like it was like 1am yeah. in the morning and it's like <laughs> we're all installing then Steph is like all right, I've, I'm ready. And then I'm like, <laughs> and I was already asleep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, I've got the PS4 version you of my are? PS5. <laughs> it was totally you up, yeah. Um, it's, uh, I, was, I was doing a raid while I was waiting for it to install. Uh, and then the, the final thing I'll touch on uh, just very quickly is the, the season two of, of Black Ops, which uh, is really great. Um, the battle pass is is good, but uh, the the new gun, there's a, um, uh, oh my God, it's fallen out of my head. It's called Far uh, the Far 83. Farah 83 uh, Fantastic Vomits bullets Is my favourite gun In the entire game And this map Apocalypse Is a brilliant map I love short I uh, love small to medium maps That have a really good loop Where you can basically Just hug a wall And run around I remember this um, map And this is Such a good map There are just so many Great little engagement points So many Really fucking annoying rocks and trees that hide that rock in particular that hide lines of <laughs> there's sight. There's huge lines of sight in this that like there's nowhere to kind of hide at the back of the map. Is yeah, there? I love this map. So um, yeah, season two uh, off to a great start. I've already hit like 50 on the battle pass. Like this. Um, Yikes. So yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it's doing great. Um, the final thing I wanted to mention as well, I talked about it in the show. Last week, yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah. last week. Uh, Loop Hero, this little uh, indie game coming out that not a huge amount of people have heard of, but I loved. It is so good. Uh, you might recall, you basically, like, it's h- half a clicker, half a roguelike, half a c- deck building card game. Phenomenal game, and I raved about it. I recommend everyone plays it. Uh, well, Devolver um, and uh, their um, uh, marketing, whatever, were watching and uh, actually sent us some codes and said, hey, maybe your viewers would like uh, uh, to get their hands on a copy of the game as well. So the game is Loop Hero. So we've got courtesy of Devolver Digital and Four Quarters, five codes to give away uh, for the game. And uh, the way we're going to do this is uh, if you go follow at Devolver Digital on Twitter, and tweet at them using the hashtag BackPocketSentMe, just completely shamelessly, uh, then I will go through that uh, hashtag at midday tomorrow, and I'm just going to pick five people at random who did that, and uh, you're going to get yourself a copy of uh, Loop Hero on Steam. It is a brilliant game that will chew up a ton of your time, and it's just, again, it's that little thing of like, this is what I want to be spending my time on, Mm -hmm. where you've got so many unique ideas uh, that, yeah, it's just super fun. So... Follow at Devolver Digital on Twitter. Tweet at them using the hashtag backpocket sent me. Is that our first hashtag? 
I think it is. Oh, we had it no, is. we had Bring Back Pocket. <clears throat> oh, that's you know true. What? Oh, yeah, of yeah. course. That was our first episode. Our- <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know if I responded, but the mods messaged us before the show and said, do you need us to do anything for the code thing? And we're like, no, it's a Twitter thing tomorrow. I was like, you know what would have been really handy right now? Yep. Exclamation mark code. Oh, yeah. Uh, at De- Devolver Digital, hashtag Back Pocket sent me. Like, to make it clear. Instructions. Instructions. As to what to do. <laughs> Uh, it's already also, there. The one- syntax error is, oh, well, the syntax error is, uh, what, a what a champ. What a oh, champ. Oh, that's amazing. Uh, thank you. <laughs> so we had like 17 minutes where we sat around going, uh, are we ready? We're ready. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew, uh, age 0112 again has gifted another five. Oh, my goodness. Amazing. The man You're can't right. be stopped. Thank you very much. Uh, so that is it for what we've been playing this week. Uh, we are going to uh, head to a very quick break with a uh, new commercial involved Ooh, in it as well for is. one of our beloved Top Stitched uh, patrons. And we'll be back with some gameplay right after this. <laughs> That should be good. All done? Yeah. Great. Uh, so we just saved them in a folder marked patrons. And so for that one, it would be Mason, not Nathan. Cool. Nathan. No, tricky. I can see what happened there. It's Mason, not Nathan. Cool. So Mason with an N. So Nathan. I can't help but hear you say Nathan again. It is Mason. Mason is the following. N-A-T-H-A-N. Let's go over this a few times. Okay, quick exercise. I'll say the word, you repeat it back. Mason. Nathan. Nope, Mason. Nathan. No, I'm thinking Nathan. Mason. Nathan. Nathan? Nathan. Nathan. Ah! Okay, Mason, not Nathan. Mason, not Nathan. Mason. Nathan. No, Mason. Nathan. (laughs) Mason, not Nathan. Ready? Yep, go. Nathan. Mason. Nathan. Mason, Mason, Mason. Nathan, Nathan, Nathan. Mason. Nathan. Mason? Nathan. No. Mason. Wait, what? What? The thing you said before. Nathan. Fucking kill you! Always remember. It's Nathan, not Mason. Oh my god! Hey. And a big thank you to Simon Vin and Anna Melting for the word from our sponsors. And a massive thank you, of course, to Mason, not Nathan, uh, for your amazing patronage to the show. Mason, your commercial. It is Mason? Yes, it is Mason. <laughs> uh, said, uh, said, oh my God, story of my life. Uh, your, your slapping hand a little sore? It's really sore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah <laughs> I, like, yeah, I deserve some form of empathy for this. Like, it's really tough. Yeah. 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 Enforcing yeah. that. Maybe, um, maybe, maybe we should... Is Mr. Gus gone? <laughs> oh, my God, it's Dickie Day! <laughs> <laughs> How do you have that? Wait. <laughs> 
<laughs> ah, vi skal gang! person in the company make a hey hey it's saturday reference <laughs> on a thursday oh, fucking hell. oh well oh my <laughs> god oh i'll see him uh, he's an old man in a young person's body <laughs> oh god oh can i ask will a question you may did you go and buy a bunch of hats or are these lying around the house Th- these are all on my door like they're all there just hanging on my oh my god it's me, i'm here <laughs> They're all just on the door. I was really surprised. Amazing. Really? Yeah. Oh, God. Fascinating. Um, uh, I don't even know what to say with that. Uh, yeah, well, if uh, if uh, Will continues to piss you off. <laughs> yeah, oh, right. yeah. Good segue. Um, Will does not piss me off. He did a delightful job with all of that. It's just a wonderful thing that we decided to escalate while we put it together. <laughs> like, what if I slapped you? There was no Stephanie, slapping in the script. if you would do the honours, this is a little something that uh, we teased on the show ages ago, or mm. like we're told, and not teased, but sort of like said, uh, Wigan, made by Wigan, at made by Wigan uh, on Instagram. Viewer, supporter, friend, lover, potentially. Uh, Potential murderer (laughs) Definitely that Um, uh, Makes custom knives And contacted me on Discord A few months ago and said Hey, would you be interested in a back pocket knife? To which I said, duh (laughs) Uh, And today we got a very special package So Steph, please open up the back pocket knife Yay I'm so excited Um, Yeah, it's a It's wonderfully put together, but also has some details on it. So uh, he wrote a lovely uh, letter to us, but I'll read this part, which is, um, uh, this is the back pocket knife, which is perfect for both opening parcels and hunting orcs. The blade is a custom elvish design, hand forged from 1075 high carbon steel, etched with acid to give it a little bit of rust slash orc resistance. The handle is Merbar and Beach. One side is etched with my logo and the other with two of Tolkien's runes, which translate to BP, which, as you may have guessed, are the first letters of back pocket. As carbon steel can rust, it should be washed and dried after contact with moisture, Will, occasionally lightly coating the blade with oil, canola is fine, which will also help reduce the rust. Uh, I also dabble in home brewing and have included a bottle of my Vikings blood cherry mead and hand matched cu- and cut engraved cups, which can be 22% alcohol, which means it's 5.75 standard drinks. <laughs> oh, and it, Do you want to pass comes, a knife across to Nick so we can get a, a cool get stand as well? Oh my god. That, like, Not, that way. On Not that way. <laughs> <laughs> Not that way. It goes like this, I believe. Oh, that that's is so nice. awesome. It oh my gosh. Itself. Forged in the fires of. Where is he from? Mordor. Okay. <laughs> Wigan. <laughs> Wigan. I don't actually know where Wigan's from, but uh, here's the blade right here. Uh, you see, so there's Wigan's uh, logo there, and then this is the BP in the Elvish runes uh, there. It's also got like s- nice little sort of like roughness here, and it's sharp. It, it is. It's very sharp. It's very pointy, and it feels like so. You do the stab, you pull it out, and then when you you get to the bone, and you see, like you cut through the flesh, but then mm-hmm. you get to the bone. I think you flip that one across, mm-hmm. and you give it a little there. Oh yeah, yeah. Nice. Uh, very nice. Know. It's got a good. Oh, hair. this is so cool. Oh, and they're etched. These are beautiful. I've got a single there. Uh, do you want to pass me the knife? I'll put it on the stand. Oh, or do you want to cut do. something? I was going to. Well, cut I was just going to like put it in here. <laughs> oh! Didn't work. Oh my goodness! Definitely uh, punctured that's, the fabric. That's freedom furniture you're puncturing there. <laughs> it's fan- it was fantastic. fantastic. Sorry, fantastic. It was fantastic. fantastic. I always get those two confused, Wait, and I walk up at a freedom, and I'm like, "This is all very expensive." <laughs> <laughs> so thank you very much, Wigan. Absolutely beautiful piece of work. Cherry meat, anyone? I will take. Well, five point seven. I got to drive. Yeah, we all need to drive. Five point seven five standard drinks. Twenty-two percent alcohol. I'll have a sip. I'll have. A, I'll have a. I'll have a nip. A wee dram. And wee, wee dram, dram, please. Dram. Should we open it if we're not going to finish it? No, we can seal that up and put it back in. It's mead. It's like we pop something in the top of it. It's basically so. just so. methylated spirits. It's, it's, no, but if it's carbonated, it, it won't. We'll go flat. Is it carbonated? Oh, okay. Sometimes we'll drink it next carbonated week. Carbonated and sometimes okay. it isn't. On the show. Still? I think we should. Yeah, but like <laughs> earlier. I think we should save it. Yeah. For something special. The bit where I was like, oh, we'll do that. And everyone went, yes. I was like, okay, I'll put it in. Did you do that? Mm-hmm. I didn't know. No one was listening yeah. to you. Everyone was looking at the knife we'll, we'll that was near their throat. Yeah, leave it up there so that we all know. Yeah. Uh, so thank you very much, Wigan. Go to uh, at Made by Wigan or at Papa underscore Wigs uh, to get your own custom knife. Dude, thank you so much for those. They are, it's phenomenal. We're going to need to put it somewhere 
safe and out of the Not reach of the arm, dogs. The arm of your chair. <laughs> uh, all right, let's jump into the next seg. Uh, this is a little something we call very good gameplay. And this segment, of course, brought to you by our good friend, Avexia. Avexia. Uh, a word that uh, rhymes with the vexia, rodentia. It's a noun. It means small gnawing animals. Porcupine, rat, mice, squirrels, marmots, beavers, gophers, voles, hamsters, guinea pigs. And then another word I can't pronounce. Isn't that just rodents? Yeah. But rodentia. Yeah. It's a very fancy It must be word. the genus mm. categorizing yeah. them. I didn't create the language. No, that's true. And there's only a certain amount of words that rhyme with the vexia. It's been my complaint, yeah. <laughs> so, this bit's going to run dry pretty soon. I like how you're stretching the rhyming nature of it. Like, the oh, rhyme yeah. is just there in a few kind of like... Yeah. Oh, yeah. Perplexia? <laughs> That's a thing, yeah. Uh, today on Very Good Gameplay, we are going to be checking out Marquette. Marquette? Maquette. I believe it's Marquette. Maquette. Maquette. I think it would be Maquette. Maquette? Maquette. 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 There's no R in it. Yeah, there's no R. It's just Maquette. Uh, there's a new puzzle game which uh, utterly gorgeous. Um, I had tracked for a while uh, since I heard about it. It's out now on Steam and it's also the, um, it's on PS5. It's the PS Plus free game for PlayStation 5. Okay, month. cool. Um, so it's available now with that. I just um, love a purple color palette. So do I. Very visually appealing to so me, do this I. game. Favorite color. Um, this game, the conceit behind this is... I played the first level, so if okay. you get stuck, I can help. Um, it's kind of like The Witness meets... What was that game? Will, what was that game on Spawny where you manipulate the site? No, no, the one the where things are sizes, objects. and if you got closer to them... Super liminal, thank you. It's kind of like a mix between those two things. Um, but basically, uh, it's also uh, it's sort of narratively driven where you explore... A relationship. Um, oh. Which you see here. Now, uh, I should note that right now there's actually a, a, a really fantastic song playing in the background that we have had to remove from the game so that we don't hit any, any sort of legal trouble on Twitch. Oh, sure. Um, so there's a really great soundtrack to the game of like of licensed music. Allow me to fill in the gaps. Oh, Thank no. you. Pete's party. <laughs> it's Pete's party, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Bob Dylan over there. <laughs> that was, that's Bob Dylan meets Eric Cartman was the, uh, the initial push yeah. as well. So. Yeah, it's a beautiful song. We were listening to it earlier. It's unfortunate we can't have it here. And so the conceit behind the story is, uh, and I've played the first couple of levels, it's kind of like uh, just tracking through a relationship. Um, uh. And I, I, like, I don't think that at the moment it hasn't done anything particularly like revelatory. Like, is it like, is it like metaphors and symbolism? There is metaphors. Uh, there's a bit of metaphors and symbolism. It's a little more like, and you'll see once we get through this Literalism. Part, it's a little more, yeah, like uh, remembering... Parts of our life and seeing those parts represented. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yep. Are we um, dead? Uh, I don't believe we're dead, <laughs> but we could be. Uh, I think Would you I th like to be dead? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think we've broken up, but I can't uh, be sure. So we're yeah, dead inside. Right. Um, we've gone insane. Also, what? check out this jump. <laughs> Does that get bigger as oh, like my that. heart sores? Or <laughs> could, could you say that uh, that's probably the most realistic jump in? That's true. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. <laughs> um, the uh, but then you sort of get through this early narrative part where it's telling you all about like. I'm do can I just say I'm also doing my best. If anyone's out there and wants to hire me as an E3 demo. Uh, oh, yep. Game player. Mm. I'm just trying to get my uh, soaking in the details. Mm. Ooh, yeah. look at that! I'm Ooh. walking sideways. Slow like pan. no one should be able to nice. do that. But he knows Slow how to pan. get those thumbsticks rolling. Yeah, really show it off. <laughs> None of nice. Hit, hit. Just nice. Look, I'll, I'll barge you it. Wee! <laughs> just run up there. <laughs> David God. Lighting was like, make sure you get a nice shot of the candles. It I spent weeks on those candles. <laughs> Can't go prone. Oh, Can't no. go let, prone. Let, do those little like uh, chalices on the wall there. Yeah, nice. Butterflies. Oh, I'm oh. drunk. I'm or drunk. Moths. <laughs> moths to the flame. The same thing. Yeah. Um, okay, sorry. So we'll just, uh, as I said, push through this. Lovely. And again, when we listen to it with the music, there's a reason it feels There's really a reason like... that it feels like long and quiet at the moment because yeah. there's actually this lovely song that's sort of like, that actually... It's like an indie song with lyrics. I was and... just about yes. to say, the handwritten like uh, words are giving me like song lyric vibes and it feels like someone's kind of emo breakup album. <laughs> <Totally>. <laughs> and the song ends around... A about here-ish, I believe. It starts to fade out. 
Um, and then <laughs> Gus will just... <laughs> yeah, oh, this goodness. is where the And I is. found our sketchbook. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I oh wrote my a name God. in a sketchbook. Uh, the one that we would ta- take turns drawing in back when we didn't know each other's secrets. <laughs> <laughs> Are you stupid? It's too real. <laughs> Buy your yeah. laughter, funny fans. <laughs> uh, amazing. Oh, <laughs> my keys, but good Charlotte. <laughs> my, my. Uh, not through here yet. Keep moving on. Uh, yeah, go out there. And there's a little something. Well, I, uh, yeah, I, ooh, to carry an item, you can hold it and press. All right. I have a key. Um, and the keys for the door. I found my key, but I missed my train. Dash pocket confessional. <laughs> okay. uh, so if you hit uh, circle uh, Wrong controller B uh, B uh, You threw it Oh my god oh, no. I thought you nearly broke it <laughs> <laughs> I broke the game <laughs> The game's like no not like that <laughs> So uh, you can carry something around And then you can hold something out in front of you With B or circle or whatever Right okay um, and, uh, and that will then um, Good thinking I see like it's I would have Pick it up Pick it up too. And then from there, I press B and whoop, yeah. out it goes. So then I can... But keep going because this is not... The, we're not even there yet. We're not even Radio. at the bit. Mm, Like um, a glove. Because the conceit behind... Uh, Syntax Harris says, why are you holding the key in your mouth? <laughs> <laughs> Good question. Uh, so as we come up here, we begin to reveal the conceit behind the game. Very nice panning, Gus. Very pretty. <laughs> a little too far. <laughs> too much. Yeah. Too much. Yeah. Too much. Too much panning, I feel like. Oh, this is nice. Oh, pretty. This is great, Gus. Is this you or is this? <laughs> it took over. I was like, what the hell? <laughs> I figured. You can tell when an actual professional is recording. Ooh, I just couldn't stop turning the pages and looking at what our past selves were capable of. Now, imagine. Steph, in the uh, emo voice, please. <laughs> <laughs> just uh, couldn't stop. <laughs> The, uh, it's a phenomenal looking game as well. Like the lighting in particular in the game is beautiful. Mm-hmm. Um, but so then this is this maquette is, the core is a thing. word I've never heard before. So it's like a small diorama. Oh, okay, yeah. right. And that's so that's the puzzle We're in one. The We're in one. behind the game, which is basically you are now in a diorama, mm-hmm. and within your diorama is a small diorama of the diorama you're a diorama <laughs> Yeah. Is that a Simpsons quote? I feel like that's a Simpsons quote. Rama, Rama. <laughs> and then Maybe. in order to uh, interact with the world, you need to interact with the small diorama that affects the one that you are in. God. In a one-to-one. It's a bit Inception-y, kind of. Well, a bit Inception-y, yep. Totally. Oh, this is... Oh, voice acting. Uh, this is uh, the is acclaimed okay? um, um, yeah. Mandalorian director Bryce Dallas yeah, Howard and her real-life partner Seth Gabe. Can I see it? Wiley! Um, oh, yeah. I'm just cranking it in for the oh, audience. Oh, voices. <laughs> Thanks. I did not I, uh, know I she was the daughter of Ron Howard. Do you want to just so pause for a second and, and I put... Just, I thought you just figured that out then. I can't. Oh, you can't? I was going to say there's subtitles that we will turn them on. Oh, sorry, yeah. <clears throat> Can you give skip us, it? Give us... I can't do that. Can you skip it? Nope. We're stuck give us the, in give us the I'll, I'll, I'll give you the breakdown. They're meeting in a coffee shop. He's an artist. He drew that castle. Uh, and then she's like, oh, oh I God. skipped it. And then she's like, oh, my God, I nearly spilled coffee on your thing. And then she's like, I used to draw. And then they draw a little bit together. And then that's their little cute meat. Meat cute. That one too. <clears throat> but he had cute meat, which is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's Is that a penis joke? Yeah. Peter Burns? Right. Yeah. Oh, the diorama is open I don't know. <laughs> okay. Right, so I'm o- I'm over there. Can like you see yourself in it? You can't see yourself oh, in it, no. Oh, but uh, that would be too meta. I imagine I have to interact with that world somehow. Yes. So if you have a look around in the big world, and having something. seen the trailer, <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> also that as well. Thing. Actually, just turn around, Gus, because so you know you're just being very charming. No, no, no. I don't know where it is. Is it we, back where I'd left? What's it? that big fucking red thing? <laughs> Presumably, we'd be, the, we'd, we'd be the broken up, she's sick or dead. I, I'm one of those three. Sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah, okay. Uh, I reckon I reckon she got sick, you broke up with her and she died. <laughs> she died. <laughs> Bryce, tell us how it... No! Uh, Nick, I 100% walked past that red cube. <laughs> I was not funny. being coy. I was like, can I get in it? Oh, uh, right. oh wouldn't shit. It, wouldn't Pick it be it amazing up. if it, it turns out in the end that you were just a shit boyfriend and she's better off without you? Oh, That'd what? <laughs> cool. That's cool. So if I put it back down over, not right where it was, but just a little bit over there. Yep. That's out of the way. God. This is what. You can access that thing. That's cool. 
Uh, but we're in a smaller one. Yeah. So I, in the next part, I'll show you. It's a bit of a mind cool fuck. Yeah. Cool. It's it's a really it's a really Uh-oh. clever. Um, I'll jump back up, Pete. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> it's the. Uh, Tortoise having sex oh, with a croc. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, you get a. There's a little bridge to pick oh. up. Cute. Oh, am I a lift? Oh, so if you repair the world, the mini world, then the big world will be repaired also. Yeah. Go. And if yep. you die in the matrix, you die here. Mm. Not like this. <clears throat> the um, right. I need a bridge. Let's go pop a bridge in. Because I'm about to watch you solve this in the obvious way. Actually, I'll wait one moment. Oh, okay. Uh oh. Whoa. Uh, what am I doing? Right bumps, left bumps. Cool, cool. Uh, and L. So ah. uh, LT and RT make it like further away. Yeah. And bigger gotcha, or. Gotcha. <clears throat> oh, just bigger. Yeah. You can like manipulate the size of the thing as Ooh. well. Oh. Okay. That feels right. Oh, it'll <laughs> That'll do. do. It'll I reckon do. I can it'll do, do that. Do. Chill hold. Chill hold. <laughs> um, the, uh... This perfect world. And then that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but my question is, can your pathetic jump get you there? Yeah, totally. <laughs> I mean, nice. Yay. Oh, my God. So oh, wait. It doesn't like this. In the, uh, in the trailer, I saw the, the player does it with the key. They make the key bigger and use the key as the bridge. So you can use, oh, you don't have yeah. to use the bridge because the bridge exists. Oh, and I imagine that's the probably game actually the think ne- more That's probably the next later. puzble. Yeah, once I yeah, lose, yeah, the yeah. Key, what, lose the bridge and it goes, what else could yeah. you use? Is that about to happen? It's it. about to happen, but oh, that's fine. Oh, well, <laughs> <laughs> It wasn't me. <laughs> that's what it's I totally do. Uh, but the, the thing that I think is cool is that uh, you come up here, this sort of world uh, is created here, and then obviously you pick up this piece in front of you. Um, that's Ooh, shining. Bit of Gosh, it's and beautiful. What I really liked about this is I was in the same situation as you, Pete, where I was like, oh, um, I'll just move this bridge around if I need to. Um, but the... Yeah, pick that up. Um, <clears throat> is that a golden ticket? But the... Uh, because that thing has appeared now that just transformed, it appears in the, in the model, and so now you can't get the bridge out. So that's what forces you to use the key later as a bridge because this like thing has grown over the like this world has grown over the top of the bridge. Uh-huh. So now you can't like remove the key. Oh, I see. Uh, right. the the remove the bridge from. Uh, that's where interesting. You put- and it, as a way of making see, it's it now so- trapped in there, and so it's like you can't use oh, the bridge. Yep. Uh-huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. But also yeah, a good way to to help alleviate the idea of like too many options to solve a puzzle. Yeah, 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 and breaking yeah. your brain a bit. Yeah, what have yeah, I picked yeah. up? Uh, so you've picked up. It does look like a little t- like a little solid gold ticket. That's exactly yeah. what it is. You can ticket. go. Go to the Wonka factory now. Huzzah. Uh, have a look around the outside. Well, that in the like, ignore the model for a little bit. Oh, sorry, so look for the thing that's... Is it a ticket? It is yeah. a ticket, oh. yeah. From uh, the so time also, you went to the movies. It's, <laughs> it's like... <laughs> the other thing it does, which I'm not sure how I feel... Pete's making a face Very to funny. Steph, which is like charmingly smiling, but also <laughs> never do this voice again. No, it's, it's fucking been, great. Because <laughs> we... Because we Stephanie. connect on this, and Peter like emo rock? has a tantrum if I try to play I don't anything have a tantrum. <laughs> remotely emo when we're driving in the car together. It's only when I'm driving and you put it on. I'm like, I don't want to be angry and driving. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, okay, okay. Tickets too big. Oh, tickets too big. But tickets too big. Tickets too big. What are you gonna do with that enormous ticket? Stick it. Stick the ticket. Stick the ticket. I can only make it drop bi- it in. Put the ticket but in the thing. And then pick up the little. No, but the li- no, it'll get littler. And then you pick up the little version of the big thing. Oh god, th- there's some. Drop that ticket. Drop a ticket. I'm working on it. The, the controls are a little. Oh, that. Sorry, that's pick up drop. Circle. Yeah, up, uh, oh my god, it's huge. Sweet Jesus. That wasn't okay, right. Whoa. You can't pick that up. What are you gonna do? Oh my god, I put hate, a red box on it. I hate puzzle help. For. <laughs> 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 um. <clears throat> I don't know. Puzzles, uh, it's too big. Yep. I need to make it smaller. Yep. So far, I can only make... So, everything that appears in the puzzle appears in real life. And everything that appears in real life appears in the puzzle. So, what would happen if you walked out to Uh, that red block? uh, Oh, 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 drop it. Oh, drop that ticket. Leave it. Now, run back in there. Little red block. Just, no, no red block. Red block. That's the wrong thing. 
Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, my God. It's Whoa. world ending. Uh, little ticket. Come here. You. Wait, uh, am I blind? You found is. yourself. Right there. It's right there. Little fucking ticket. Yes. This pick up and I know I'm having it's a very difficult mechanic. One is pick up, one is hold out. Ticket goes in. Hey, hey. that's adorable. Isn't that cool? Perfect. That's a very those are two very clever mechanics which you could hang and at middle to middle of the range indie game on that costs anywhere <laughs> to fifty dollars. <laughs> um, the other thing it does it it's sort of like um it gates you out of. Did it freeze? Yeah, I think we just froze. Oh, oh boo! Well, uh, well, I guess we can we can kind of end it there. The only the only other thing I wanted to show you. Well, what a shame that it froze. Um, uh, the only <laughs> th- other thing I wanted to show you was get the keyboard. Yep, Alt F4 when you um, reboot it. When uh, you get the key, like Pete said, and uh, and at one point you use the key as a bridge um, to connect two things. Mm. But what you can also do is take that key and drop it. Uh, so uh, you take the full size key and drop it in the world at a certain angle, and then it's leaning up against one of the walls, and then you can run up that key and jump outside of the world of the puzzle. And when you mm. do that, you land and you realize you're in a bigger version of that world, and there's a fucking enormous key in front of you <laughs> leading to another world, and it's just oh, wow. elephants all the way down, like yeah, um, right, or turtles. All I the way down. I think I saw that in when Gus jokingly threw the big cube. Then are we a little? Are we a little we're further? Back? We're further back. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, it's okay. No, that's fine. Uh, time wise as well, Gus, you got your wish. It's perfect. That's perfect. We nailed it. Uh, <laughs> but uh, but uh, it, can I say it's it's really so far it's very very charming. Yep. The puzzles are quite simple. Like if you were sitting there with like thirty more seconds, you totally like and no one bugging you. Thank you very you much. You just get there. It also does this thing of like I don't know if it continues throughout the rest. I'm of just the level. there squeezing a red box into <laughs> the got it a eventually. red red block eventually. into ticket thing. I didn't mean that condescendingly, but I'm glad <laughs> that it came out that way. Um, uh, it also does this thing. I don't know if it's just in this first level, but going well, you're running around and there's multiple doors and stuff that you could go through and you saw it sort of like gates off the doors that aren't relevant to the puzzle part that you're doing right yeah, now yeah, which yeah. could arguably be a little bit simple but I'm not looking to like really break my brain with this kind of game I kind of just want to experience the like novelty of it, it as opposed mm. to it brings up an interesting point about puzzle games which does frustrate me which is the uh, lack of direction or, or the open endedness of them to say like you've got a lot of options here what do you want to do I think I was saying the other week uh, the Talos Principle uh, is mm. a really oh, yeah, great yeah, yeah. puzzle game with that. heaps of dead ends and you're like okay so it's a process of elimination of going what can I do mm. um, and I'm more drawn to a game like this uh, was, I would that, say- was that the one where you were reflecting light beams and Yes, yeah, so there was a lot yeah. of lasers and uh, like it was a great. There were great puzzles, but you didn't know when you were in the puzzle. Uh, by contrast, yeah. your portals are uh, games that literally say, "Here is a Here's room. A room. <clears throat> Work your way out of this room." And that's mm. for me really satisfying. And I can imagine with a game like this, same kind of thing. Yeah. I know you're very early in, but is the is the the puzzle element more alluring than the narrative thing or vice versa? Yeah, or they the both? Narrati- I feel like, and uh, like I'm quite early with the narrative thing, but the narrative thing feels like uh, it's very well acted. Like the like uh, both of them do a great job but it, it feels like so far i've hit nothing that's like oh that's surprising or it's yeah, just right. like someone recounting their relationship and i'm like yeah everyone's relationship is interesting when you're in it uh like and so yeah it's not bad but it's kind of just like it's this, not this mechanic has existed in other games before and stuff uh yes. the, the, the narrative you mean like the storytelling device no no i think just the puzzle mechanics so you're saying it's all shit no. no, I was saying I was, saying, was saying the story is not pulling me through. It's the puzzle mechanics are, are the thing pulling. Me oh right, oh, I, the, okay. the story is not. I thought you were anything. just saying that as a game, like mechanically, it doesn't surprise you. Oh, okay, no, I think that like I, I've seen stuff like like sort of like this, but I think that the way that you interact with the objects is really charming, and the way that it's sort of like using things in ways that they're not supposed to, and just the joy of sure, sure, putting sure, them sure. in this world and stuff is. Really I think it's also really lovely as well that you're mentioning is it superliminal or subliminal? Or superliminal. Superliminal. superliminal world. Mm-hmm. Um, from memory, that one is kind of. Uh, <laughs> from memory, they were pretty static, like white chambers of not much happening in them. Uh, or am I thinking of a. Di- What's the one I'm thinking of when there's perspective and if you got closer to an item, you'd pick it up? Yeah, that's super limited. Oh, yeah, they were in pretty boring surrounds. Whereas this. Yeah, it's like using it as. Mm-hmm. It's not only just window dressing, it's like it's actually a diorama that's stunning and looks like something you would see in a princess's bedroom, like as a. You know, I was going to say in a kid's bedroom, but no one has a 
giant beautiful diorama. A princess has a giant beautiful diorama. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, uh, Ash Ketchum in the chat said, "I'm feeling the same. Puzzles good, narrative is air, but uh, the puzzles will get you uh, get you through it." Uh, all right. Speaking of getting through it, let's get through the rest of this episode. We're going to jump to another quick ad break, and we'll be back with a list. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> <laughs> Here is the bag of hair trimmings that you will receive that we no longer talk about because it nearly ruined a friendship. Mm, mm. But what a piece of history. What a piece of history you now own, Luke. Uh, punch in on one. Uh, and now punch in on this face, which is just so scared of Steph. on the first and final season of Best Friend Forever. Nick, Steph and Bo met their forever friend with a questionable name. This is massive and I'm Bona. <laughs> I bet you're a little bit tired of seeing that clip. They discovered a unusual problem with Rainbow Bay's doors. Yeah. Is this just a doorless society? It's that safe. There's no doors. And unearth the truth of the bully stick. It's the penis. <laughs> Clip that. And of course, they track through the entirety of Rainbow Bay's single and ready to mingle puppy partners. Oh, I don't know who to go to first. Both were suitable. He's a lawyer and a chef. This is female pornography. And the not so much. The wanker and a hypocrite. Oh, fuck. But now, with a date with the comically short witchy wonder of Astrid under their belt, the trio embark on their final quest. We just want to bone someone. Oh, very nice. Bone. That's next week on the final episode of Best Friend Forever. Hello and welcome to <laughs> Back Announce Reviews. We've got one review this week of our podcast, Pocket Watch. Uh, it's from Wrathful Bagpiper. Thank you so much what? for leaving a review. Wrathful Bagpiper? Wrathful Bagpiper? Wrathful Bagpiper. Wrathful. Oh, Wrathful. Like Rathful. a bagpiper who is full of wrath. Mm -hmm. I think they all are because they were yeah. forced to play the bagpipes. Mm -hmm. And it's also like, the, it's an instrument <laughs> yeah. you, you squeeze under your arm. That's the most wrathful action you can think of. Uh, Wrathful Bagpiper says, I don't listen to these type of podcasts, but I will always make an exception for Back Pocket. Not enough Scotty, though. Zero out of ten. Ooh. Uh, wait, it's a zero review? No, I think they've just oh, Christ. added yeah, right. that to the copy. Five the star, but zero. Five stars out of five stars, yeah. but zero yeah. out of ten for the Scotty on Scotty. Yeah, right. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Can I ask, would, because Scotty famously, mm. um, a dog uh, that can't talk, um, but also famously, like, not a big barker. No. Do you so, want us to get her to bark? Well, I'm just, I'm just wondering whether or not it would make yeah. for good podcast content to cut to what is essentially just white noise. <laughs> Scotty, what's that? Scotty, come here. What's that? Scotty, come on. What is come, that? Come. Scotty, what is that? What's that? Scotty, what is that? What's that? What is that? What is that? What is that? What's that, Scotty? What is that, Scotty? What is it? I don't know what it is. What is it, Scotty? Oh, oh and go to bed. <laughs> she just went from asleep to like danger. <laughs> and then back like, to And now she's like, seconds. there's nothing. Like, <laughs> Good girl. Good girl. You protected everyone. Good girl. You did so great. Well done. If you feel guilty about that, head to patreon.com forward slash back pocket and subscribe monetarily for that dog's therapy. Uh, because that's no way to wake up. That's no way oh, to wake up, Gus. Nick, what's that? Nick, what's that? Oh, uh, fuck, Nick, what's that? <laughs> oh, okay, big stretch. Well, actually, actually. She just uh, sauntered off. She's going to have a drink after well, that. Well, I'm going. Shocking. <laughs> very quickly, I'm a very deep sleeper. Sure. And if there's any sort of baby-related stuff and I'm, if I'm alone in the house and there's baby-related stuff, wake up straight away. But if, if my partner's there, I do not wake oh, up. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. You're sleeping alone in your house while your baby is there. You can't well, do that, can you? 
Like what? if Beck's what? gone away or something? Can you Do you think people take shifts just watching over the baby? Yeah. At night? Yeah. I don't know much about <laughs> baby. <laughs> you fucking killed everyone's <laughs> brain. <laughs> I just lean over my niece in the car. I'm like, <laughs> sleep. <laughs> and chat just caught up. Uh, <laughs> um, but it's uh, so single it hurt. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm a very heavy sleeper. So, but if there's something going on and I need to be woken up, Becca will like shake, shake, shake. I don't wake up. And so she'll go <clears throat> like that. Uh. And then I'll jerk away. And I said to her a couple of days ago, I was like, do you just, punch me awake and she's like well I, I shake you for ages and you don't wake up so I have to wake you up somehow and I'm like yeah we gotta figure out a better system because to me I just get punched awake <laughs> I don't feel the shaking I just get like bam and so every time I go what is it <laughs> like a Scotty I go like because P- Peter snores sometimes in a very intense way and so mm, like I freight train sometimes <laughs> yeah so when it's really bad I do Sorry. like an application of pressure oh, yeah. that increases oh so I'll just okay. do this and then you're like, what's wrong? And I'm like, roll over. <laughs> He's like, and does that jerk okay. you awake or does that, do you just sort of like come come to consciousness? I never remember it. Okay, right. It probably happens every night and I okay. don't remember any of it. We got to work. If anyone has any suggestions on how to get woken up better. Um, <laughs> I think my boy says jerk awake. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I think the real fear is like I'm getting woken up because one of us is not watching over the baby is the, the sleep. That's from. That's from. Uh, all right. Let's move on to the final segment for the night. The most contentious mm. segment in the history of Back Pocket. And that, of course, is Pickpocket. Five years for what you did. Do not forget what, what you did. Yes. No. <laughs> That's it for a moment. What the fuck was that? <laughs> <laughs> what was that? <laughs> only, Who did that? Only Gus and I had heard that. I don't understand. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. <laughs> so, let me, just so to clarify. No, let me talk to you. Five first. years for what you did. Do not forget what, what you did. Yes. No. <laughs> so, okay. That was, that uh, was Russell Crowe. Yes. Yep, in yep. Les Mis. Yes. Yep. As Javert. Yep. Remixed yep. by Gus. <laughs> Remixed by, okay. And, what was the second And part? in that clip, we see Russell Crowe in that scary driving man movie. Yep. Yep. And also Javert. Mm-hmm. As Javert in the window. What has that got to do... Nothing. With this segment? Pickpocket was originally uh, <laughs> a slide that had um, Russell Crowe in a beautiful mind picking out uh, stuff on a chalkboard. Which was a reference well, that none of us thought made sense. Which For reasons, Gus made that, <laughs> that, that is very clearly a man not making a list and very clearly a man working through a mathematical equation. <laughs> I fucking quadrupled down on this. You and so sure what, what's the... Can we hear that one more time? So wait, 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 I think we get for it before. The context is... I Five was like, years for what you did. Do not forget what, what you did. Yes. No. I'm fucking hate you. This is so random. <laughs> we... Uh, this... <laughs> Oh, forget the list. Okay. Wait, so, so what? So the thing, in graphic detail. What? What is the last piece of audio that I hear? It's uh, <laughs> Jackman going yes, and then I hard cut into him going no. <laughs> so I was like, w- Pete. Now we're talking about like Pete loves an audio sting oh. clearly. <laughs> Uh, and he was like, we could put one to this. And I was like, yeah, we need to put some bad Russell Crowe singing. And I was like, well, then we would just cut something out of Les Mis where he plays Javert and he's sort of famously people didn't love his performance of his singing. And I was like, yeah. So I started cutting up songs from <laughs> Les Mis. And I was like, uh, it was really hard to do. It wasn't sounding good. And I was also cautious we'd hit some copyright stuff. Even if we just use little grabs of him, I was going to drop in the word, the list in there. And it was just, it wasn't working. And then I found the audio of that, confrontation at the start of the film that has no music behind it they just basically like yell at each other yeah because it's oh, a terrible yeah. film because it's not a great it's rendition called, of a very good part of a song speak singing they do it just in like with no even like orchestral swells behind yeah, them I just yeah, found yeah. a clean version I was like I'll just cut some of that up and then I was like <laughs> Pete's like it's half an hour till the show I'm like ah, uh, and then I grabbed some just like generic sting music and I just threw it over the top and I was like 
kind of sounds like he's singing to the song. And I just slapped the shit in there. It's so fucking the, the great. The first slide you used I love it so much. didn't have any connection to the no. segment. And now you have just taken that a step further away from the segment. Correct. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, this is why the list thing needs to exist. Uh, Pete, one more time just for the people. I think so. I think so. Five years for what you did. Do not forget what, what you did. Yes. No. No. Incredible. Uh, she Bakes sometimes in the chat said, I can't breathe. <laughs> and then followed that up with literally crying. My parents are worried. <laughs> 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 and uh, Nicrotex says approved, and it's Nicrotex's segment. Of course, we didn't yes. even get to that part, which is this segment is <laughs> sponsored by Nicrotex, aka Nick Belling. Uh, follow at Nick Belling on Twitter for some Twitter bangers. This one from January of 2020, going all the way back. Apple's AI doesn't know where I work and just says every morning, hey, you're going near Blank Street, right? Until I searched for a bottle shop before dinner at a friend's and realized there was one across the road from work. Now every morning, Apple's AI says, go on to the bottle shop. <laughs> <laughs> Very much enjoy that. Uh, all right, let's jump into this list. This list, uh, I feel like this, this is either going to be very safe or incredibly controversial and will tear the group apart. Uh, people are, who may not be aware of the controversy of our previous list. Yep. Uh, it was a great segment that you were all fucking wrong about. Um, and uh, we got a bunch of suggestions of list topics from people. And we chose uh, uh, for this one, this is Multi Fisher's suggestion. And we are going to pick the back pocket best console controller. Suggested by Multi Fish, best console controller. And let's it's already a, it's just... best controller. Let's, yeah. let's already break this segment apart by saying, I don't think it's the best. It's, it's the favorite controller. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We've so, decided it's our favorite. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Which and, might be the best one. Yeah because, yeah, because I guess you could argue objectively the modern video game controller is the best one because it does the most. Oh, we this are going is going to our favorite. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Someone, do, we, do we want to power through the options that are up there? We're going to whittle it down to five. We're going to go really hard at the start, but we've got the Atari joystick, the GameCube, the Master System, the Wiimote with Nunchuck, SNES, Wii U pad, PlayStation. For original PlayStation. Dual, DualShock up to PS4. Uh, Xbox Wireless, which is 360, 360 through to Xbox Series. Uh, Nintendo 64, the Xbox Elite, the Xbox uh, Duke, the original Xbox, and which is the Duke. The, the PS4 DualShock, the Steam Controller. Fuck off. Uh, the Switch Pro Controller, Joy-Cons, and the... Newest controller of all of them, which is the DualSense. And so we will whittle this list down to five and then we'll rank that. And I will just say very quickly at the top, the two rules that we had was one, the controller had to be manufactured by the console developer or the platform holder. Yep. No third party controllers. No mad cats. Yep. And also it uh, it has to work on the majority of the games on that platform. So it can't be like a light gun or something that only works on like one or two games. Okay. Someone already broke it by saying uh, the WASD keyboard should win. I'm like, <laughs> oh, that's not a bad suggestion. Interesting. Oh. Yep. But I would say terrible, terrible <laughs> controller. Agreed. Like, yeah. it's actually awful, and yeah. I wish that we had something else other than the... I've tried those little, like, separate side things Good. that are more custom-built. Anyway, that's a different topic. Yeah, we've, uh, let's we start. grew into those. They're not made for game. Yeah, now. exactly. Like, yeah. True. True. Uh, all right, well, let's start uh, knocking things off. Should we do it the way we did with... Um, I can't remember the last time we did one of these, where we just go around, just go around. and yeah, knock yeah, them off as it. we go. Yeah, yeah. And then if there's any c complete, like, upsets, yeah, we'll yeah. fight it out. Then we'll fight. Uh, I'm going to say the GameCube can fuck off. I don't need something that <laughs> ugly on yep. this show. Okay, yeah, it's, uh, it's beloved, uh, and people have, by who? Uh, people who then thought it worked better with the Wii and other Nintendo. It's devices. beloved by people who've never had a good controller since then on that platform. <laughs> like yeah, if yeah. they could what use the literally any other controller. Yep, agreed, here, agreed. What? <laughs> yeah. It's it's super lovely, and it like again, these are favorites that we're also saying we might have some nostalgia attachments to, but like, yeah, pr the practicality of how well it's, it's gone. It's yeah, gone. It's gone. Okay, Gus. it's gone. Um, I will say that the Steam controller can fuck off. Oh, interesting. I mean, yes, absolutely. Terrible. At least no it, was it was trying to do something. Yeah, yeah like, 
eight of these controllers are identical. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that one at least had cool discs. Did anyone <laughs> play with it? I tried it a little bit. It no. was terrible. I played Towerfall, yeah, right. I think, with it. And it, yeah, was right. like, it felt like using a phone with a controller. Yep. It was yep. terrible. Cool. Stephanie. Uh, I will uh, yeet the Wii U pad because I feel like the Wii U. Oh, I oh, oh, <laughs> oh my God. It's, it begins. You know, I would have put that potentially on top five. Yeah, me too. Really? Me too. Yeah. Me too. Because I think that it. Do you want to pick another? Like, <laughs> <laughs> what I'm saying is, like, we haven't got a rule system here that, like, you, if there's a group veto. Why don't you move on to the next one? Like, if the same thing happened to me, I would, I would, I would be as graceful. You would, as you would <laughs> back out straight away. I have a lot of spicy takes for this list. Scene. Oh my yeah, good, god! Yeah, good, good. It's gone. Okay. Oh god! No, brutal. we got to make do with the. We're just the, gonna end up with these like five. No, no, no. no. Black. no. Were you inspired the switch? We are, we get to keep five at the end. That's five. true. That's true. Uh, okay, then I'm going next, and I'm getting rid of the PlayStation controller. Go yep. fuck yeah. yourself. It's my turn, and I'm getting rid of the PlayStation. Yeah. Controller. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I actually wasn't going to get rid of the PlayStation Girl, but it is a piece of shit. Yeah. Uh, I, they've improved on it massively since then. It was never comfortable to hold. Yeah. No. Thankful that it no. The biggest problem with it was how plastic-y, plasticky and light it was for yeah, such a long totally. time. So it's my turn? Yep. Uh, I'm going to get rid of the PS4 DualShock controller <clears throat> because it's basically the same thing and it's still... As the DualSense, you mean? Uh, oh, or is, so, it's, so you're getting rid of it because it's basically the same thing as the original. Yes, yep. yeah, and and it still for me was very uncomfortable to hold. Any any triggers felt like I was really curling my fingers around them. Yeah. it's just I and like, and I know people love that controller, and I'm seeing those people in the chat. But Multifish is with me, and Multifish, this segment is yours. I'm gonna kill. I'm gonna kill the Xbox Wireless because we have the Xbox Elite there. Yeah, I like behind totally. the scenes. I felt that we shouldn't have put Xbox Elite there because I was like. It is essentially the Xbox Wireless. It's, but I, I would rather keep some of the more interesting choices up there than find them both on the list, which they wouldn't. But just yeah, making sure that is a yeah, yeah. Steph, I'm scared of your. Yeah, choices. I'm scared now because we're 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 getting down to. I mean, there's two on there that I can see need to go. <clears throat> uh, I'm gonna get rid of the Xbox Duke. No. Yes. <laughs> Why did you do this? That was real. That was real. Uh, oh, fuck. That's, uh, that's definitely a... a f <laughs> it's in the realm of being favourite. It's an awful controller, but I, I love it. I love how ridiculous it was. It's so oversized yeah, totally. and awful. Totally. But it, it was you fun. knew when you were holding that what you were holding. It was like yeah, a metaphor for a small dick. <laughs> <laughs> It was called the Duke. I'm like, come on. I never uh, knew it was called that right up until like years ago when they like were re-releasing them. I was like, yeah. I never knew it was called the Duke. I don't Duke. know that it was called the Duke until they did the controller S or whatever it was. Yeah, When right. they were like, oh, let's differentiate it and be like, this was the OG and this is... Sure. The... Okay. Uh, I'm going to get rid of the uh, Master System. Good man. The Master System and the NES had like those they didn't have the mega drive up there the master system and the nest because of the the, mm. the rectangles with the sharp corners yeah they were uncomfortable to hold mm. of course they were a joy to use because they were all we had but my god the nest is iconic as fuck like you i'll get sneakers in the color scheme or a belt buckle that looks like yes. it but when you actually go i'm gonna play a little bit of something ugly, you're yeah. like this does not feel oh right. that one hurts because that was my first console yeah. and i can still feel how yeah. Yeah. digging those, into your palms yeah and that <laughs> like, there was <laughs> it it was like it was like it was made by whoever designed utilitarian concrete buildings <laughs> yeah. in Soviet Russia. Yeah. Like it was just it like was a brutalist controller. Like, <laughs> the first plastic was too expensive to make. Totally. Yeah. And the but and the everything about it was terrible. But my God, it was just like it represented joy in my life. Okay, so, so speaking we of cannot curve the plastic. <laughs> See, speaking of representing joy. Uh, <clears throat> wait, hang on. We're at the point now where there's seven left on the screen, oh, and, and two, we've all had we've all had two. But I know what Pete's getting. He's correct. Yeah, we've all had two passes. Yeah, I feel like now we're now whittling we can... it down to five. Let's have some discussion. Let's about have yeah. discussion. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Than, uh, because like, I definitely want to get rid of the Nintendo 64 controller. It's... Me too. Peter? Oh my <laughs> god! That I didn't. That was my other spicy take that I've been holding Let's back. Punch with. Okay. Okay. So, uh, Peter, in in the interest of discussing it, <laughs> it is potentially the worst designed piece of technology ever, mm -hmm. and I'm including the power glove. Uh, I'd agree. It's fucking stupid. Yep. 
there's something about it. Mm. There's something about that it's a sex toy. The fact that it has a third handle. <laughs> What's it for? You have to man- manipulate your hand <laughs> never all the way around. Like that Ridiculous. On the, couple the, of games yeah, you, the, need to, you need. You can't just move across. You no. need to do a U to get onto the next. So one. the way that you clearly a Sega kid. Yeah. The way that you played it was left middle hand right. on the outside and middle. Yeah. Yeah. And the right ones you could click with your thumb. Oh yeah, that sounds comfortable. I, it wasn't. That was ridiculous. <laughs> or you would. Or like then you would to go through a menu and then you go back. Yeah. To or, or it was like the game's paused at this moment and the and the C buttons as they were called mm. were for like navigation of menus or like shit things that you'd never actually need oh, to do. Or if you played Goldeneye the right way, like you were running with the C buttons and using your camera with the thumbstick versus moving with the thumbstick and s- I can't remember what else they were, but it's like there was the so- someone give me the name of what it was called in the actual settings, but it was the way you had to play if you were good at the game. The I like it, so here's the th- Gus sometimes thinks he's good at games. I was good at that game. Um among like your there are th- four, four year old friends <laughs> <laughs> when you were 12 yeah. <laughs> like i would say just it's sitting underneath the super nintendo controller as well is like large, it's iconic yeah. and all those kind of things in every but possible. i i remember like it it squeaked and cra- creaked it was no, the no, buttons no, no, were no, soft no, no, and no, no, no. What you, wait like, what are you talking about so i'm saying that i feel like let's let's kill the snes first and let's whoa, whoa, no no what? no 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 uh, excuse no, 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 no. me what I feel like we should just leave, like... Mm. The, uh, my argument... For there are other obvious choices to kill before the N64. The 64 controller is uncomfortable to hold. It is a stupid design. And the only good things about it were things that you needed to purchase separately to plug I, into it. I think, like, I have, have two opinions on this. Hello? Excited to hear them. Oh, thank you, sweetheart. Um, <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like it was revolutionary in that the, it had triggers, and yep. I feel like that was one of the first controllers that had, like, triggers. The Z button. The Z button yep. and Z targeting and Zelda and stuff like that. That was pretty revolutionary. Yep. However, I played a lot of Mario Kart on that thing, and the concentric circles on the thumbstick would press into my thumb, very uncomfortable, mm-hmm. and the thumbstick <laughs> would always, like, wear out and break. Yep, like, this you is had the keep, thumbstick. You had to keep, like... It would always sit like this. Yeah. yeah well, you had God to keep forbid replacing you... the controller because it would just like it just didn't have a good like lifespan. <clears throat> yeah. God forbid you ever played Mario Party, which a couple of the games involved. How quickly can you rotate? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was hand on the thumbstick. Everyone did that <laughs> until you ground the thumbstick into a fine powder. Which yeah. then I found that like game stores were selling Nintendo themed bike gloves. Mario with, Party glove. Yeah, <laughs> with leather in the middle, so kids weren't getting calluses and wearing out the handle yeah. of their hands. So, so it's gone. Funny. So to me, that sounds like it's gone. It's gone. I think it should be gone, and I think we, we yeah, should okay. follow. Follow it up with, oh, well, do you want to go? Because I think it's weird that the, well, actually, no, I know what should go next. I mean, I kind of don't want the Atari joystick there. It's iconic. It is the beginning of everything. It Uh, is. Yeah, no, okay. But is it your favorite controller? That's where I thought this was Well, it's definitely more favorite than the Switch Pro. (laughs) Yeah, the Switch Pro's got to go. That's got to go. Gus. To the top of the list? (laughs) (laughs) What? (laughs) I know. I know. (laughs) Oh my god! It's it is serious? the perfect it's middle so man fucking contro- shit. It, it is, is the awful. perfect controller that floats between the Dual Sense, the Xbox, like all of these things. It just, it really quietly sits in there as quietly sits. It doesn't do anything amazing <laughs> at all, at, like <laughs> outrageous. But it doesn't do anything like it doesn't miss any marks either. It is perfect. <laughs> it is. No, it misses a lot of marks. Yeah. It, no. It, it feels plastic and cheap. The, <laughs> the Switch Pro controller is when you. You said to your grandmother, can you go get me an Xbox controller from Kmart? She comes back with that. Yeah. <laughs> chat, chat knows where I'm at. And also, Pro controller is great. And also the, the, the shape of it, the ergonomics of it, push your hands off the edges of the handles. Yeah. I played all of Zelda with it and yeah. I did not enjoy it. No. It's also I too did not light. Go- it's too light. Yeah. It doesn't so, fit. The worst no part too is though, I feel like it's necessary because like the other option is that you use the Joy-Cons and that little thing that they slide into that little. Oh, horrible. And then oh, go, disgusting. And then you're playing yeah. with a little square. We're going to end up with two controllers that we like. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so well, okay. So, 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 uh, so hang on. But I will say I played through all of Zelda so much with the Switch Pro and I didn't know I was playing with the Switch Pro. Like I know what it feels yeah, like. Yeah, but you played play Doom on the Switch. <laughs> yeah, and handheld. It's like a bad man. <laughs> like I would say that the, the Switch Pro is just inoffensive entirely like well, how is that in the top five favorite controllers one of them is inoffensive i was playing with that this is the whole fine time. i guess yeah <laughs> it's great uh, uh, i would say kill the joy cons i've never liked them uh, i hate i hate how they look when they 
like when they're separated, like yep. they don't look, they, they don't match. Well, There's, we can't have, I feel like. I just uh, feel, I, I agree with you. I don't think they, they probably shouldn't be on there. The thing is, it's like, they're just, they're, um, their gyroscopic capabilities are really incredible. So, it, well, uh, well it, <laughs> yeah. it, is the question we're asking, is it the Joy-Con or the, the Wiimote? Wiimote. Yeah. yeah, it has to be the Wiimote. Wiimote the Wiimote's better. for sure. The Wiimote's and, better. The and, Joy- and, more, and more, like, revolutionary yep. for its I time. think so. I, I, like, I dock Feels massive better. points. for as, as cool as the gyroscope and stuff is in the Joy-Con, and the fact that you can... Uh, I like the fact that you can turn it on the side for multi... Like, not as you have to, but, like, I've played that stuff with my nieces and stuff where you just go, oh, like, everyone's got a controller now, like, pretty cheaply. But the fact that it doesn't have an actual D-pad is, like, a mm. massive mistake in, like, a platform that is built around, like, games that require <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, yeah, yeah, that yeah. kind yeah. of control. Yeah. Uh, plus, the drift sucked. The drift... I never like, experienced it's yeah. 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 Well, yeah. Yeah. Let's, like, let's point out the glaringly obvious... The Joy-Con, the DualSense, and the Xbox Elite uh, all have lawsuits against them for how fucking broken they are. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, I'm... So, here's my thing. Wait, so, uh, Joy-Con's uh, do- gone? Oh, yeah. Uh, Joy-Con's, 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 gone. Gone. Joy-Con's gone. And there's okay. our five. So, Ugh. so yeah, because I was going to say... And we're happy with the Atari joystick on the- No, because you're saying it's there because it's iconic. And, yeah, it's iconic in the f- in the sense that it came first. But you didn't but cut it's like, it. No, but I... W- but I would say the N64 controller is more iconic and did more for gaming and is more, like, uh, iconic as a symbol as well. Like, like but yeah, but uh, uh, the Atari joystick is iconic I feel, and no, works. I, I feel like we're choosing between the Have SNES controller one? and the 64. Yeah. Sorry? I feel like we're choosing between the SNES controller and the 64, if, it, yeah. if, it, if that's the and, conversation. Yeah, and to me, the SNES controller is probably number one, so the 64 Really? <laughs> It's not. It never felt. It's a good. great controller. It's a great it's controller. A great controller. It's, it's like flat. it's the ultimate. And it's the ultimate of that generation. Yeah, that's I probably like played the most game. with it out of everything here. Yeah. So I'm not by any means saying oh, I never used it. I don't like it. But it's like the the start and select buttons were super weird and rubbery, and sometimes you didn't know if you pressed them in. Mm-mm. It was flat, so you think you were enjoying. It. If you tried to use a game that needed triggers the whole time, you ended up cramping pretty hard. But like, also, it is a color palette that has remained iconic to video games up until this day. Yeah. Like, you look at that and you go, that is video games. Like, mm. I love... The design of it, I think, is the best-looking controller as well. I think, personally, I would put the... Is this... Well, we've still got six on here. Oh, Joy-Con. Yeah, the Joy-Con's, Joy-Con's gone. Joy-Con's gone. Um, Get him out of here. Get him out of here. For me, I, I even though it could be recency bias, I do think the DualSense is my favorite controller. Yeah. It's I think not that good. I, I, I love bad. I love it in the hand. I love the triggers. I, f- I love the adaptive triggers. I feel like I haven't used it enough. I wouldn't say it's my favorite yet. I feel like I'm still like Xbox Elite would probably be like my like number one. That's where I was before the DualSense came out and I do so much PlayStation gaming now as opposed to, like, I do, do zero Xbox gaming at the moment. I just feel like um, it has, I haven't had enough time with it but yet. But when, when I've gone back to the Elite, which would have been previously my number one controller and I loved, I went, oh, it feels a little small in my hand. Like, the width of the DualShock, I mean, I've got, like, slightly bigger palms and stuff. Like, yeah, it just feels better in my hand. And I think that it's doing, it is successful in so many of the gimmicks that it has in it. Mm. Like the yep. rumble, even if it's not necessarily supported by tons of games, sure. The I think the rumble is amazing. I think that the, or like the um, hap hap feedback, yeah. the uh, the adaptive triggers are amazing. Uh, the little speaker thing is cool. Yeah, I, I I still think it's novel at the moment, and I'm enjoying all those things because of that reason. I think when I settle into something, I do prefer an Xbox layout. I really, I I still hate the um, symmetrical the, thumbsticks. Uh, no. I don't mind that. I hate the pad in the middle of the dual sense, like as a, as a button. Mm-hmm. I forget it's a button. I've occasionally been stuck in a game going, and this was the the mm. PS4 Dual Shock. I'm like, I don't know how to do this thing, and then I'm like, oh, hang on, it's I pressed that. Baby's crying at you. <laughs> I press that, and it's but. like, oh, that's how you get to menu is you press this big. I like, I know with the Xbox button that that is my home. I hit that. It's like it brings up a dash or brings up like I know how to use the Xbox button in the middle. Um, and so it's just, just like <clears throat> yeah, just taking the temperature of the chat right now. There's a poll up mm. oh, based no. on this over which like. The order Out of these of this. ones? Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> so, head to head, 28% of the vote each, DualSense and Wiimote. And then it's 23% of the vote, Xbox Elite. And then 16% SNES. And then and 4% the Atari Joystick. Yeah, I don't want Atari up there. I, I'm Atari's number five. Put it number five. Then it shouldn't... The fact that we just easily drop it down to that is like we had to put an iconic one in there that like where I, it I all don't, came from. Uh, if you want me to make it a defense of the Atari Joystick, I will. In that it is... 
it, it does exactly what it needs to do for that console. It has remained a, like, even though it's taller, it has remained the primary input that we still use today mm. in every, basically every single controller going forward has incorporated some kind of joystick. Mm. No, technology. no, I get that. I get that. I never played with it. I don't, how often did you and guys the idea play of holding, with it at all? I've, like, I've played with it a fair bit. And the idea of yeah, like okay. being able to hold it in one hand and do that is like, is very tactile and satisfying no no yeah i get that too i guess i'm just saying like i have so many hours with all of these controllers yep. and then i have like two with yeah, the atari totally joystick mm. so it's like but i but uh, yeah i totally um i get it's the iconicness of it i just at the same time just can't have the ex i don't have well, experience my, I, I, and memories I, with it we're caring too much here <laughs> <laughs> for me it's uh, of these five games of these five controllers i would go and again thinking about favorite these are all good controllers. Yep. Yeah. I would go SNES, Xbox Elite, Ooh. probably Dual Sense, then Wiimote. Maybe flip those two. Because to me, I think that I think the DualShock 4 was better than the Dual Sense for feel. Uh, but I yeah. disagree with that. I'm with Nick and that I really, really like it. And I think it's just I haven't spent enough time with it yet, but I yeah. I feel like it's one of the most innovative controls we've ever seen in for, for Which is hard to do at the game. point now where we're like, it's like adding features to cars. It's like, like been around yeah. for you so look, long. It's go, like, uh, go from the Duke all the way up until now, and really, like, it's been iterative until this, which feels like it's genuinely bringing... I mean, what was out. the first one that brought in uh, your R2 and, uh, like, was that... The that was third-party first... controllers. Yeah, but... Oh, sorry, like, the, the, you mean... The, the first PlayStation controller, right? Mm, that had bumper buttons at the same time that the... Uh, the Xbox had two For triggers me, it was and... The Black and white. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but for me, the X, the Duke was and the first was one the that had bumps had and the... triggers. Or did the... No, the Duke, no, no, the Duke just, had triggers. just had triggers. It yeah, was right. the 360 era that had the bumpers and the PS3. DualShock 3 had the R2 and R1. Yeah, right. But they were like full clicky buttons, which I hated on the Yeah, they were two. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Well, I would be happy, <clears throat> even though I love the DualSense, I would be happy with the SNES at the top because I think that I love that controller. Mm -hmm. um, uh... And then, yeah, I, I would go DualSense, Elite, Wiimote, Atari Joystick. I would swap DualSense with the Elite, but otherwise my li I'd be happy with that list. I'd go, yeah, Elite, DualSense. Where is Mega Drive? I, I, I agree. I, I played a lot of C Sega, but I don't think the Mega Drive controller warrants. So you're saying Elite at the top? I think it's uh, three above. I'm happy for the SNES controller to be number one, but I would put Elite afterwards. And you would go SNES from number one? Yeah. And I would as well. Two, yeah. yeah. Don't know why I don't want it up there for some reason. I have I have such a you're attached to the Nintendo. 64. Yeah, I think I'm burnt by that. I'm <clears> looking <throat> at it as this like, but I again I was such a Ninty fanboy. I am. I played so much Super Nintendo. It should be up there. I just think I've since picked it up and been really disappointed with how it feels yeah. as a grown up. I'm like I hate this now. It's like, but that's I feel just that I feel that way about the 64 I love controller. Them. I've been to like bars and stuff like that where it's like, oh cool, like you can yeah. sit down and play retro games, and I pick it up and I'm like. When was this ever <laughs> can, a thing that we used? You can like, pick up a SNES controller. It doesn't make sense at all. But yeah, you can pick up a SNES <laughs> controller and it still functions. Yeah. Whereas every 64 is controller broken. still exists is broken. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll agree so with that. What if we went SNES, Elite, DualSense, Wiimote, Atari Joystick? That's me. That's, I would I I live with that. that. Yeah. I personally would switch the DualSense and the Elite, but if I'm in the minority there, then I'm just happy that it's on the list. And oh boy, it's going <laughs> to climb. Uh, I mean, so, Will, can we see I, what that list looks like? <clears throat> Miyamoto is crying. <laughs> there it is. It's SNES, a beautiful Elite, list. Dual Sense, Wiimote, Atari Joystick. Here we are. It's a good list. <clears throat> and lovely buttons. Do we girls. actually think so that we wouldn't reds. put an Elite or a Dual Sense as number one in terms of we are looking at the the iteration of everything c controllers have done and now that's the thing that we pick up and we actually know how to play with it. Well, I said that I think the dual sense would be number one, but it's... Uh... And for me, the Elite would be number one, but I also... I feel like this is also... We're talking about different periods of, of our lives. And, yeah. yeah, it's we're you know sort I mean? of muddling the top with a bit of, like, nostalgia and... No, and... But, I, but I would also say that I think the SNES does just, like... It, it, it felt like the first controller that had refined to the perfect amount of input, great design, felt really good in the hand, mm. and worked for the kinds of games that you were playing. Mm. Yeah, it worked for the kind of games we were playing, but the, the, the lack of joystick con of technology there and how far that pushed games forward and how much I enjoy mindlessly playing But it playing existed before the 64. 
Yeah, I'm not. I'm not pushing the 64. I'm. I'm saying I would put it an elite or a dual sensor or yeah, modern right. controller at the top to say playing games now mindlessly, not even looking at my hands and being able to control a camera and a body in a space fl- like effortlessly. That is what I uh, would consider favorite experiences with games, mm-hmm. and I would trump a you know a, a, here's something that pioneered but would you it. Be- begrudgingly accept this list. Well, I'm outnumbered, yep. so... So that's a yes, so there it is. Five years for what you did. Do not forget what, what you did. Yes. No. No! <laughs> that final bit was put in there as, like, the way we sum up these list arguments, which is yes, no. no. <laughs> and I forgot that was even in this. <laughs> Another successful list segment. And uh, the chat ended up, uh, I think it was 30% uh, at the end voted for which the is I love how you total bullshit bias because thirty six percent of our chat don't have a PlayStation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they voted for your sense. Oh, There's a bunch of liars. I love how yeah. you just proclaimed that a successful list. It is a successful. List. That was, That's the was, point of this segment. Great, we na- we nailed it. We got a list. We had a fun engagement with the past. There was some heated tension. We heard that song forty times. <laughs> All one out for the Wii pad. Yeah. And there was just uh, the right level of like chat being frustrated with what was happening, yep. and then also incredibly thrilled with what was happening. So I feel like yeah. Another Nick, list it down. was a disaster. Will? Right down the middle. Will? What? Put this list mm-hmm. at the top of the list of best lists. <laughs> and we'll continue. We will make that list and then we'll continue to reference that list in the future. Cool. If you're, uh, <laughs> uh, all right. That brings well done, everyone. Well done. <laughs> we did it. We did it. We did it. <laughs> we, and, and we did it just before Gus got. Really, really Rocky. serious about that controller <laughs> yeah. and yeah. wrecked the yeah. mood. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's enough that I'm down at the end. <laughs> I'm grumpy. I need a nap, and I need someone to watch me while I nap. Yeah. Uh, and if you want someone to watch you, then I recommend getting in contact with one of our mods because they have been watching over you, even if you don't know it. Uh, wanted to give a big shout out to our wonderful mods who look after the community. They were running the poll tonight, but more importantly, well, not more importantly, but like I guess more work. They are constantly in the Discord. They put that whole thing together for you guys and making sure that that experience is delightful as it is. That Discord is a phenomenal place to be. And if you want to be a part of it, then head to badpocket.com, uh, head to patreon.com, sorry, forward slash backpocket and become a member of our community. It is free to join at the moment. And there is a link in the chat in any moment now uh, for you to join. But to unlock all the channels, then you need to become a patron at the second tier or higher. Uh, and patrons who have become patrons at a second tier or higher, in fact, the top stitch tier who uh, help very significantly make this show possible uh, with your phenomenal generosity. Uh, You've seen commercials for these people. They own segments. We are, of course, talking about Reese, Oranishi, exclamation mark, Tim, Mason, not Nathan, who got his commercial tonight, (laughs) Slowpunk, Loki Cat, Raj, Akarash, Camo, Avexia, and Nicrotex. We are only, like, two commercials away from fulfilling an agreement that we made with these people <clears throat> nine months, months ago. ago. <laughs> and then we're going to need to come up with more excuses to make ads. Totally. Because yeah. we've only got so many segments to sell. Yeah. Uh, and I guess we could just open up more $100 tier things, but they're just fun to make. Yeah. yeah they, they are, are just fun to make. Yeah. And it's nice to finally just be done with all the commitments we've made to them uh, in any creative form as it is whatsoever. So I, oh, I, there's a yeah. relief there that I'm feeling. Yeah, I yeah, just yeah. like not happen. I like how um, we can celebrate our community with fun, innovative, and very weird creative outlets. Yeah, yeah. And none of them so far have taken it personally. Loki <laughs> cat. Uh, so, uh, and one of those people, of course, who is uh, such a supporter of the show is Raj. Raj uh, being the the well, let's just. Call, call the fly in our ointment. Yeah, the <laughs> spectre of death that hangs over us all. Oh, Vega Bus says uh, they also recently went top stitch. Oh my goodness, oh my that must God. have been very recent. Thank Vega you. Vega told me Vegabus. that information last night. I think. There you go. Uh, I did not check the Patreon this morning, so thank you very much, Vega Bus. You'll get a commercial very soon. Uh, the post show is brought to you by Raj. If you want to stick around for the post show, it is the best chat on the internet. It's even better than this show, uh, and it will start very shortly. If you head to the Discord, there's a post show channel there. For the link for that show, uh, patreon.com forward slash backpocket, youtube.com forward slash backpocket channel, at the pockety on Twitter, and redbubble.com forward slash people forward slash back hyphen pocket for all your merch. Have I done all the plugs? I think so. You plugged us up well and truly. Damn it, it was that camera. (laughs) Pete, play it. Which one? No, no. Hang on. I hate it now. Just pick one.
I don't like it. Pete's party, yeah. <laughs> it's Pete's party time. Pa, 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 party. It's not Pete's party time. <laughs> They're right next to each other. <laughs> the look you gave me when you did it, it was like you found the bone, you just went. <laughs> uh, thank you very much everyone for hanging out We're going to see you again next Thursday uh, We'll be doing the news and shit next week But you know Thursday's the big show, we'll see you then But we'll see you in the post show, we'll let's back it out Let's back it out Let's back it out, let's back it out. Yeah.